best part of that trailer is just like Marv's head, bro. <laughs> I'm so serious. It <laughs> leaves him <laughs> super like he's like mysterious, like M. <laughs> he's like the M of our show. Im sama. We're good though. Yeah, we're good. All right, all right. So, welcome everybody. This is that one piece talk. Um, we are in episode 40. Wait, I just said the whole thing wrong, right? Yeah, you did. All right. Sorry. This is that Sorry. One Piece talk. <laughs> where we talk One Piece. <laughs> uh, my name is Larry. Lawrence. Lionel. Seb. Parvision. Parvision in the building! Let's go! <laughs> so, um, before we get into our celebrity guest here, and before we get into the break week of One Piece itself, which everybody has been going crazy over, <laughs> and nobody knows how to contain themselves because of the fact chapter 1043 was just so crazy of a bombshell, basically, mm -hmm. that was dropped on us for informational reasons and also joy boying and awakening and <laughs> we're gonna get into all that stuff but today is gonna be a two-hour special um I, i've been waiting for a two-hour special like this i'm glad we could do it with par vision um so today on our show i'm gonna just introduce you bro <laughs> today on our show we have one of the most intellectually inclined self-made hard-working analytical analyzers who finds strings that connect like a complex spider web that only he knows how to climb he has over eleven thousand subscribers on youtube uh nine plus thousand subscribers on tiktok and 176 followers on twitch please follow them all he's also known for his incredible deep dive video on usap which is titled on YouTube, Usopp the Hidden Giant. It currently sits at 204,000 views. What the? Woo! <laughs> um, <laughs> I'd like to personally welcome the man himself, Par Vision. How are you? Yo, I'm good. Honestly, that intro, like, <laughs> what? I wouldn't have intro myself with any, like, I was at three words. I'm so honored, you know? Like, that's what's nice about being here. You guys are so wholesome, um, like, and in the setup, everything, you know, I really appreciate like you guys setting this up and then reaching out. Yeah, no, believe it, man. It's our pleasure. I'm glad you're here. You know what I'm saying? Um, hopefully this show lives up to your standards today. <laughs> uh, we do get kind of wild sometimes. Sebastian has some really bad takes. Never, never. <laughs> and, uh, you know Don't what I'm saying? Don't have seen him. I yeah, see yeah. <laughs> A lot of people like to agree with him in the chat, but they know he be wrong. I be right. So I don't. I'll, 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 that's all I'm saying. Do you guys have a counter on who's right? Because I think it's, Larry has like some like the Zunisha bro, call out right. Bro, that was bro. a solid one. Yeah. Vision. Listen, even, even I've, been, one. I've been right most of Wano. No, that's it's all not, I'm not true. No, 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 not true. Larry said. Oh, you don't put Larry said King and Queen weren't fighting Sanji and Zoro. Put it that way. No, I didn't say that. Run the miss. tape back. Run the tape back. <laughs> we'll find it, bro. We'll find it. <laughs> okay, okay. So, um, also, nice let's, let, oh, to announce something, uh, our latest YouTube episode, because usually our clips go viral, because clips always do better than actual hour long, because nobody wants to sit through the right. whole thing. Our latest episode, last episode, finally hit 1,000 views. Hey. That's kind of crazy, based on the fact that, like, to be honest, like the, the episodes themselves have just been growing each episode, and it just seems to hit that 1,000 mark was a huge milestone for me, but also for everybody involved. Because I know there's so many supporters out there for our show that actually love us for us, so I always want to just say arigato. Like, <laughs> like, I appreciate you. Thank you for you know loving us, and hopefully we could keep providing that same experience that you guys you know start to retain. Um, if you guys ever want to support us, please do. In the description of this video, there's going to be a Me6 link. You could subscribe to us or join our YouTube uh, members. Like somebody just donated Super Chat from Trick. Oh, man, Thank read you. it. Please read it. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Before we read it. Um, you can do that, too. So you could either become... <laughs> It's like when I start mentioning it, everybody just starts doing this. Thank you. Um, so thank you very much for all the things that you guys happen to do uh, for us. Believe me, the donations that you guys have been giving is going into these hour-long episodes to make them even longer, but also the trailer that you guys just saw. So all the proceedings go to us, uh, towards the show. 
I just anyway. want to add. I just want to add. Like, no, go. You guys, you guys are seeing like the final product. I'm seeing everything. This, <laughs> it's <laughs> worth it. This is nice. These headsets, nice. Oh my god. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. It's it's about quality. I you know, I don't think there's a every time I see something from somebody else that does something, I'm like, damn, I wish that they did this better. Right. right. And it's usually more about just quality and lighting and you know, even audio. Mm-hmm. Like you have great audio. Like when we have like the little one piece TikTok reveries because right. of like your setup. Yeah. But I'm like, yo, we need to have something like that. So this was like the perfect thing to do. Even though it costs bread, yeah. I'm like, the bread is kind of like worth it to our audience. Yeah, yeah. So it makes it better. Anyway, you said you had. Uh, let's find out who's in the chat real quick All before right. we get the show started. I got you. Uh, shout out to Onion, Shane Dadachi, Jaheem, Simeon Russell, Hazy Sake, Javian, Ast Elm, uh, Triz, Dominic Garland, Gambit, Monkey De Huga, Tariq, Bart Hat, uh, Ron oh, Bart Hat. What's up, bro? You finally made it. <laughs> Wayne Gallagher, <laughs> uh, and so many more. Thank you guys so much. Um, we did get a super chat from Triz. He said Larry's take record is one and one hundred and fifty. Yo, Trey, Trey, if there was a way to ban you off YouTube, I would. No, I'm joking. Nah, thank you for that amazing record. I know you meant to switch it up for sure. We got another super chat. We did. It's hey. from. Ooh. Wow. Hey. <laughs> it's from Oz. Uh, it says, we here, fam. Thank we you, see Oz. You, Oz. Appreciate, Appreciate it, you, bro. Yeah, Thank I you. I saw your comment on my video, by the way. <laughs> what did you say? I forget, but it was a good comment. Yeah? yeah Yo, yeah. Oz is probably one of the nicest dudes you can yeah, have yeah. as a fan. Seriously. There's a couple guys in here who are like, oh, they've been sticking up with us since, like, I think we had, like, 100 TikTok followers. Mm. And, like, yeah. they're still here repping. There's, yeah, like, a, a civil that. war. For me, I have, like, <laughs> five pandas. Like, there's just, they're, all their names are panda. And I'm just like, <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like, I've noticed them ever since the beginning of TikTok. And then they stayed, they came onto YouTube, still panda. Discord, panda. I'm just like, <laughs> and then now on Twitch, they're still panda. I was like... All right. I'll How's the just... Twitch going? Everybody, he has a Twitch, so you guys should follow him, too. Honestly, I, the timing of it was crazy because... um. I was just doing it because I wanted to, uh, you know, spread out from YouTube, you know, just in case, like, my channel ever gets taken down or something like that. I have somewhere yeah. else, right? Because um, you're of the whole, um, what's that guy's name that had something happen to him? I forget him? the name. but like Totally yeah. not Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Toei yeah. came after him for, like, clips of one yeah, piece. Yeah, right, yeah. So you, and, and that's kind of the, the thing with the industry. It's like you just have to kind of prepare for that. So you spread out a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. You have, because if I have the followers on TikTok, then I can, people won't forget me. You know what I mean? Yeah. So then on Twitch, um, it's mainly so that I can, like, be more casual, too. Like, and so people are in the chat all the time talking, like, <laughs> reacting whatever and I set it up and I had no idea that 1043 would be this wild. And so, <laughs> Nobody did. So Nobody. I put out, I put my Kaido video. I put it was like 22 minutes. Like I was waiting for this because it's part of this larger series. I put mm-hmm. it out and I'm planning on streaming after my videos, like a big video, so that I can like receive people and talk to them about it and that kind of stuff. And then 1043 comes out like Thursday at 9:30, <laughs> uh-huh. and that's when I was planning on streaming. So I'm like, all right, I guess nobody's gonna care about this Kaido video. No, one, <laughs> no one's gonna hey, care at all. Par, I saw that Kaido. Video. The kind of video uh, was dope. It was dope. Right, and I have right. some comments on it. I'll save them for a little later in the street. Because I, right. I was talking to him about it. I was like, yo, you know he compared Kaido to the U.S. <laughs> and Big Mom to, like, Walmart? Yeah, yeah. And he was like, what? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you got to, like, see it. And then he saw it. Yo, that's And now I that. see it. <laughs> <laughs> yo, you got to wait till what's next. It's Ooh, crazy. I'm just waiting on the Shanks video. Yo. It's, it's going to be like all the prosthetics in the world. <laughs> Dude, it's <laughs> crazy. It's so like China. I could leak some stuff here. I could leak hey. it. Listen, listen, listen. <laughs> Save it for your channel so all people right. can see it. Screw nah, that. I got to give some exclusive. Exclusive reveal. That, <laughs> that's a tell That's a tell That's the thing with my stream. That's what ends up happening. I just like... You know, I'm like, I have all these timelines, I have all these scripts, and then I just like, it takes a while to get them out. And then people are asking, like, what about this? And I'm just like, ooh, ooh, you don't want to know all the scripts I have ready for this. Yeah. Yeah, so. Wow. All right, so let's get into questions. All right. So I know I, I have four questions. You can take as much time as you want on these guys because we have time. 
If you have questions, Par, more than welcome to bring it up whenever you feel like it. And then if you want to bring up questions to Par, do so. That's how we'll just go with it. We'll mm-hmm. just flow. So I'll start off first. First question, guys. All right. There's a theory going around that the reason the world government wanted to kill Ace was to find out if he was Joy Boy or not. The reason for this thought process is because Luffy, Luffy's voice disappeared during the last fight against Kaido, assuming he died. Uh, Luffy then supposedly came back to life, causing Zunisha to state that Joy Boy has returned. What are your thoughts on this, and is it plausible? And we'll start with Par first. So the starting thing, the Marines wanted to kill Ace because they wanted to test out if he was Joy Boy. Yeah. I think it's interesting that, you know, I think going to, uh, for the people that watch C- uh, Sebastian's video on the... the oh, you saw it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you said you saw it? <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the criteria, right? Like at this he point... He worked so hard. <laughs> I did. I liked it. I liked it. Yeah, it was thank good. You, thank you. You need more of that. Um, Told the, you. Uh, you know, like, we don't know if it's a title, the criteria that makes sense. That's one of the things that I was saying that, like, for the people that say it's a title, you need criteria. What did Luffy, uh, you know, do to gain this title Then now he's Joy Boy, right? So I really like that video because, you know, that put it into context. Is like a lot of people were saying it, but it didn't mean anything. So then it's like you would compare it to Ace, right? Like, right. did he meet those criterias? And, you know, he had the Conquerors, he had, um, he's the D, he smiled in death. Um, I think, like, I forget the other parts, but I think one thing that I would add is, like, the aspiration, the dream, right? I don't think Ace had the aspiration that Luffy had, so that might be the missing thing. And so, because Ace didn't want to become the king of the pirates he wanted Whitebeard to be king of the pirates right and so even in his death when when sengoku told him like oh Whitebeard was prompt like putting you on the pedestal to do that he was i'm pretty sure he was like wait what like that's not what we were doing here um so i feel like uh if it were a title that would probably be the main reason why ace wouldn't become joy boy because of that dream i think that dream part is really important um but that being said it's like is it there's a lot of other ways because right now I'm leaning on to the side that Joy Boy is tied to the devil fruit rather than um, rather than something external, rather than it being a title. I think that Joy Boy might be some kind of entity within devil fruits. And, and an asterisk there because it might not be necessarily just the Gomu Gomu no Mi. It might be in multiple devil fruits. Mm-hmm. It's just Luffy, again, with criteria met with all the things that um, allowed him to become Joy Boy. So that being said, it's... It's really interesting. I mean, we'll never know, but I feel like I think Sebastian said in the video too. It's like we just gotta wait and see a little bit more, right? Ten forty four is like, like um, I, I don't know if you guys saw this. The TCB scans. They. I did. I was gonna bring it up. We'll, 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 okay, get to, okay. we'll get to that. All right. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just like anxious. I'm just like, what is going on with this? What are we gonna find out? You know? Yeah. So so, I guess the fully answered thing. I don't think it'd be possible for Ace to be Joy Boy. Um, mm-hmm. it, that I think the dream part, the willpower, right? That like the willpower is the most important thing. And honestly, Luffy's is top tier amongst everyone we know, right? So Ace, I don't think had that because he was hiding behind the shadows of Whitebeard the whole time. So okay, what about you, Lai? We'll go with you next. Should I move, should I move this closer? Or? Yeah. Yeah, move it closer, bro. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. we can hear you. <clears throat> Well, we we're going thinking that um, Ace could be Joy Boy. I was thinking when you asked that question, I was thinking going off what they know. Like, because the only person who linked Joy Boy to anyone was Roger looking at to his son. Like, you mm-hmm. know, when Roger said pretty much, um, my son could do it or my son would do it. And knowing like, what Roger knows, we don't know how much the world government knows or what Roger knows or what he found out. But the, I think the biggest fear was Ace gaining the will of his own father. Because mm-hmm. since he's the blood of blood of Roger, and Roger found out the ancient history, but he was just too early, I guess the world government got scared that Ace might follow in his father's st- footsteps. And that probably made him, like, we got to kill this person now. Like, mm-hmm. before it becomes a time where he starts pretty much linking to what his father's doing and carrying out his father's will and Joe Bay's will. So I don't know if, um, if that, I don't think Ace would have fit the criteria, but I think the world government was just scared of, since him being the blood of Roger, since Roger himself wanted Ace to be Joy Boy, and the timing of it, sitting, Ace was sitting too close to the actual prophecy, and um, I'm pretty much thinking of what, um, what Ace could find out 
because of what Roger found out. And yeah. like again, but they, I don't know if they know that Roger told Whitebeard because they could uh, that could be a big point to them. Like right, um, they knew Whitebeard and Roger were cool, and Roger told Whitebeard everything. They could just told Ace everything right then and there, and Ace could say, "No, I am going to be next job or or something." So like they're um, they were probably just scared of. Ace being that, and that's probably one of the reasons why. One of the reasons why they wanted Ace to be killed. That's my thought on it. Okay. What about you, Seb? Um. So, in my opinion, I think they were just trying to get rid of Ace just in case he was Joy Boy. Like, in, just in case he could be Joy Boy one day. Like, even if he wasn't in the moment, I don't think they were trying to see if he was. It was sparking it in the like, like kill him off before we even have a chance to find out if he is. Mm. You know what I mean? So I know that part of my theory was death is part of it. But, like, if they know, like, they don't think he's ever engaged with a celestial dragon or or an ancient weapon or anything. It's just, all right, he's a member of the D-Clan. He's Roger's son. He's the most likely person that could do it one day. So, like, just kill him now so we don't have to worry about what he'll do in the future. Because, mm. like, if he escapes here, now it's just, it becomes a bigger problem. Like, look at what Luffy's doing right now. You know what I mean? Imagine if Ace escaped. And found out the truth about his father and stuff, and he had this new re, like re motivation to actually be king of the pirates or something. Like they didn't want to deal with any of that. So I think they know the prophecy, and they were like, "Let's get rid of Ace before he has a chance to even accomplish half of the things." Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't think they were trying to kill him to 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 see if he would become one. I think they were just trying to kill him to make sure he never had the chance to. Mm-hmm. But that's that's just how the world government kind of operates in general. So, okay. What about you, Law? What do you think about this question? Um, it's interesting because I always uh, I'm on the lines over the government. They're always trying to snuff out potential threats, especially in the beginning, right? O'Hara, you're finding out this knowledge dead. Robin, little kid, you know this dead. I'm gonna try and kill you. So always you're trying to uh, kill things because we notice like once you reach a certain level, they're kind of more cautious around you. The Yonko, they're not just attacking Yonko. They're not just attaching big super uh, big name pirates or strong pirates or fame pirates. But they will attack you if you're young, right? Like they tried hard taking out Luffy and Ace during Marine Ford because the potential that they both rose up, especially who their lineage was or their fathers. And they're both Conqueror's users. So with that, with Ace, I wouldn't exactly say, because also the world government hasn't really spoken much of Joy Boy, and that could be two things. And I doubt that it's more of that they didn't know, because mm-hmm. they're the world government, the most likely they would know. But because when we found out from what Joy Boy, uh, more learning about Joy Boy was on Fisherman Island when Robin read it. That's the first time we heard of it, right? I'm not saying the government has doesn't know that information, but if they did have that information, they're probably hiding that name. Right, because they weren't revealing it. Because usually they kind of keep secrets because they don't want they don't want to exact same thing with Roger or Whitebeard. They don't want to influence more pirates or ones like Joy Boy or ones like Gold Roger to take the seat. They kind of want to suppress all that. So I could see why they wouldn't mention Joy Boy because that would create knowledge creates ideas and imagination. But if you suppress that knowledge, mm. you what they can't use they can't use it against them. So if they didn't know about Joy Boy, I would say it's more like they would want to kill Ace and Luffy, two anyway potential Joy Boys. And that's why they focused on it. Like, these two cannot leave here alive. Mm. As young as they are, even though we have Whitebeard here, they're not focused on killing Whitebeard. They're focusing on killing Ace and Luffy because, like, all right, Whitebeard's t- tough to deal with. But here he is a big name. But these two, and according to Akino, Whitebeard, yes, he, he had his own age, but he still was in Joy Boy, right? So it's like these two potentials prove more of a threat, in a sort of, sort of speak, because of what they could potentially become. So I'm more thinking more of that way. The world government would kill off Ace, not to see if he was Joy Boy, but to make sure that he doesn't become Joy Boy at all. The same okay. with Luffy. That's good, too. I like yeah. that breakdown. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, uh, realistically speaking, I never really got why Ace was chosen to die. Because they could have just kept them in the level six prison as yeah. long as they possibly could. Mm-hmm. It never really made sense to me why the world government would directly antagonize Whitebeard uh, by by telling him, you, you, we're going to kill your son. Mm-hmm. You should come and get him. Because <laughs> that's essentially what it was. And I never got that part of the story because it just felt like out of place for the world government, right? Like, why would you do that? Yeah, you're supposed to add to that, too. Like, you would think that after Roger's execution, right, because they wanted to make a, like, a, a, like, 
a martyr out of him, right? But he ended up spinning it by doing the whole One Piece thing, and that sparked the whole era, right? So you'd think they'd be like traumatized, like they learn, like, <laughs> yeah, hey, yo, like last time we did this, this went poorly. Like, why would we? Why would we give them a nothing? Because they broadcasted it. They could have yeah. just killed him, right? Like that's my same thought process. Um, so it's like I think what you're saying, it's like those. Why would Oda make the situation happen, right? Is there a certain reason that we don't know why Ace had to be killed this way? Exactly. Like, that's what my mind leads to. So when I thought, and I saw this question, because I, I forgot where I got it, but I saw it and I was just like, yo, this is what I've been saying the whole time. <laughs> but if it happens to be where Sebastian says there are candidates to be Joy Boy, and sometimes these candidates cross each other, and they take one another out. Mm -hmm. And sometimes one just gets taken out. That it ultimately leads one to be Joy Boy, and then somehow he does become him. Due to plot reasons, of course. Yeah. I am kind of skeptical of the whole passing of Will through Devil Fruit. I think it does exist just due to the evidence that Sabo presented during Dress Rosa, yeah. where he said that Ace wanted you yeah. to be attacked this way like he mm -hmm. you, he like he owed you this fire fist in mm -hmm. a way he just said it like ace told him to do so yeah so i do think that whoever the previous user becomes that devil fruit and then it goes to the next one and then you feel or become sort of like that previous user mm -hmm. so i think that does exist but in the sense of the government killing ace because they want to see if he's potentially a joy boy. That also raises a red flag to me because it's like, okay, so now you're inviting somebody that could come back and potentially snuff you out, even though you tried to snuff him out. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what is your real intention there? Like, what really was the intention behind it? Because I know that M is trying to snuff out these lights. <laughs> was Ace truly a light? Like, was he? Like even the, I know I mean, he's he a he's as the eight, the flame flame <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but I'm saying like was he really a light or wasn't he because I do agree with the the whole dream he didn't have that he didn't have what Luffy has oh, don't you know get what I'm saying started he doesn't have what Blackbeard has he's my favorite character but he didn't have what Blackbeard has you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying like he didn't want to take his ambitions further than himself I think it's also important to note that the world government didn't do anything in facilitating Ace's death Blackbeard mm -hmm. set that up right so this is like. Like, it would be one thing if they instigated everything and yeah. then they planned to do the execution. No, Blackbeard, like, came out of nowhere. Like, yo, I'm going to bring you Ace. Mm -hmm. Here he is. And like you said, they could have just kept him in down and so, impel down, right? So I have pushback on that, actually. If you keep him at impel down, then Whitebeard's going to impel down. You know what I mean? Like, Does it? Yes. Yeah. It's Whitebeard. The, the whole thing is you can't touch one of my sons. He's not going to be like, oh, well, you're not executing him, so mm -hmm. I'm just going to let it rock. So like why would Whitebeard go to Impel Down then? Like Luffy. Be, because exactly. Oh, Thank they, you. they said where he was going to, um, they were going to execute him. They had a time and place. Like, they Yo, set that but, up. Yeah, but why would you want to go to fight the war instead of just going even, to Impel Down? Yeah, yeah even Luffy was just like, Yo, let's go to Impel Down first, right? <laughs> well, one, you <laughs> like, have to get through. Oh, the, take me there. Don't have, take me to the war, right? You have to get through the You know current, what it was? You right? know what it was? It was probably Marco. And he was like, Yo, I better don't do that. <laughs> I'm not strong well, enough to fight forget, Magellan. You have to go through the current, right? So Whitebeard would have to, one, get through the new world. Oh, I'm sorry. And then Do I not control a quick fruit that I could possibly just I'm end saying that? it's still more difficult than you guys are making out to be. It's yeah. easier to just fight them at Marine Ford where they actually brought him. I was and the Marines thinking, like, were like, yo, we can't have Whitebeard fight at Impel Down because if he does get here and wreck stuff, now there's level six, five, four, five, you know I mean, prisoners... Potentially escaping, you cool, can't do bro. that. What do you mean cool? Escape. No, what do you mean I'm cool? I'm a pirate. I don't care. I'm saying, okay, you're saying you're talking about why Wiper didn't do it. Yeah. Well, he has to rally his forces from across the new world, and you're saying that he rallied just, them. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and Ace was only at Impel Down for a short period of time. You know, so here's an important note, right? And I, I put this in one of my videos. I think was like um, before the war. Um, I think while they were at Impel Down. And going to Marineford, they were saying that there were reports that Whitebeard was heading over yeah. and Kaido was intercepting, right? Yeah. The thing was, how did Whitebeard get there? <laughs> he got there underwater, underwater right? exactly. Yeah. I thought it was good. Coded so, his ship. So that means yeah, Kaido just... was also underwater too. <laughs> yeah. If he's really trying to intercept Whitebeard, then they're all under. Shanks is underwater. Everyone's underwater. We don't know about the underwater <laughs> world know. like that. <laughs> yeah. But like, it's funny. they don't even go through the video. currents. Yeah, so I it's was like. like <laughs> they could have just showed up Listen, at Impel Down, there, just like there's, underneath. There's a lot of factors into why. Another part is Whitebeard's Whitebeard. He's not going to be like, oh, I'm going to take the most 
convenient route to save Ace. I'm Whitebeard. I am so now we're, the world's so strongest man. So now you're man. calling him a bad pirate. You're, no, I'm telling you, he, there's a... How do I say this? If he goes the roundabout way to do something like that, that goes against everything that Whitebeard bro, he did. he could have took, like, three commanders and just... No, we couldn't, bro. Accomplished Listen. it, bro. Oh, man. But remember, who's there at Impel Down who could we take wouldn't have three the commanders of Whitebeard and then Whitebeard? No, so but also, remember, the remember how you get into Impel Down. You needed... Bro, uh, I'm going to quake to level six. But, uh, Completely. Uh, but isn't Impel Magellan Down... Magellan wants that solution. Whitebeard to duck smoke. No, He's no, not no, doing no, that. No, but, like, isn't Impel Down made out of sea stone? I don't care. But, like, I'm just thinking, sea stone nullifies... Nullifies... Abilities. Abilities. He, that would be kind of foolish. Take my whole crew. Underwater, I mean, my ship to be fair, people. Magellan, Magellan, whatever. How do you say his name, <laughs> he was right? Able to, he's, he's able, able to do from. everything, right? Yeah. So. No, no, that's inside. I'm talking about outside. To get, right? to get White inside. Whitebeard could walk inside. <laughs> and no. nobody is going to do no, no. anything. One thing is, right? Like, I'm talking about uh, Blackbeard needed, because uh, I'm thinking about how they got in. They had the Shinji Bukai title where, like, the door was open to them. It's not going to be open to black to Whitebeard, and if he tries to quake it, it's going to be at a sea stone, which would nullify. Okay, his but ability. we're going to take Whitebeard showed up at Marineford. He doesn't <laughs> give like what? <laughs> no, 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 but there's no there's no sea stone preventing him from all right, doing so, that. Yeah. All right, so what's, 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 what's stronger? And again, three admirals or sea stone? Yeah, yeah, no, y'all, y'all, y'all missing no, the plot. The point is, Whitebeard is the man. He's y'all not going like, to go out hold of his way to duck a fight with the admirals. All right, so that's what you're asking him to do. He's not doing that. That's what you're asking him to do. He would never do that. I'm just imagine if I wasn't here it'd be everyone against Larry yeah. right now. <laughs> it, it always <laughs> is. Because it's always you're stupid. It's always wrong. You, remember, you think that said, Whitebeard yeah. is not going to walk right yeah. into Impel Down, go into the middle of it and just quake oh to the bottom no. and then have Marco no. jump him Wait, all the way down? How, how did Luffy know he was okay, at Impel no. Down? It was announced in the newspaper, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, they said okay. he escaped. But that's what I'm trying to say, but like how did Luffy and Blackbeard get in? They were letting. They didn't just break in. They Wait were letting. Wait a second. Whitebeard has also a second alternative to go to Impel Down because Jinbei was there too. And Jinbei was underneath the well, Whitebeard Pirates. Then, well, right? Jinbei was locked up. They yeah. had arrested him because he protested the war. Right. So yeah. then wouldn't Whitebeard have also, to like are we communicate with Whitebeard? Whitebeard doesn't care about Jinbei either? I'm saying <laughs> I, well, the first yeah. son of the sea, Whitebeard. He's not a crewmate, <laughs> technically. I don't think he didn't break Oh, yeah. What Ultimately, uh, I have to get to the super chat real quick. Because right, it was from, super chat. It was from Hidden Island. Hidden Island! <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's still here. I, I made him a mom. Yeah, he's still here. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. Hidden said, Man, I'm so glad to see Par Vision on the stream this week. Shout outs to my favorite OP podcast. Much love to you guys. Can't wait to hop on the show myself sometime. Everyone, don't forget to drop a like on the stream. Thank you, Hidden. Hey. Yo, hit an island with a 20, man. Appreciate it, man. I'm going to rub your shoulders when you get over there. <laughs> also, so Miss became, Cozy. became our Nakama earlier. Yeah, it was... Um, Who became was it? a Nakama? Oz, it was Oz. Oz, the female. Oz, you were in a Nakama already? <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? All right. Much so, love, man. You want to ask a question? No, I, in the middle of it, I was just thinking about like how we just ignore the gates of justice. I know. Those I things was going to bring huge, them up. Right? Yeah, are they they, I, don't think, I don't think they're stopping Whitebeard. Yeah, white but beard, they're not though. stopping Whitebeard. No, no, but I was also saying, are they right. Zunisha sons? Remember, for a war, remember when Whitebeard did a quake in the me- to the metal thing? Whitebeard couldn't break it. Yeah, that has ceased to work. <laughs> My whole argument. Listen. Wait, what can he break? But remember when he did the quake, the punch, he uh-huh. uh, punched that metal thing that risen up? The um, the wall, the yeah, walls, the, the, the yeah. barricading the walls. Yeah. Ah. The white, you couldn't break it. Listen, man. Yeah. Again, I mean, yo, when I don't, he when I don't talk, she just give him the mic. Okay. Yeah. Why'd you stop talking? <laughs> <laughs> I, was gonna say, I was going to say also one thing. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, can we just get to the second question? Yeah, yeah all right. I'll end it all to just forever the ace thing of executing. I also believe that they want to set an example. Yeah, man. Like the shutdown. This is what happens when you Yeah, do but this. that's what Park Vision was saying, that yeah. they tried to do that and it backfired. It fired, so why would you, you do it again? You can't You can't assume it's going to backfire every time you try to execute a pirate. So are we just being it's a little bad government pirate. or it's, not? We like, have, no, but we have two examples of it backfiring. They could have worked a thousand times before that. Yeah. We have the two most famous pirates ever but we don't have causing those. it no, to backfire. No, no, we're not speculating at this point. Like, it happened. It happened they, what? They were wrong Before this twice. moment, it happened once, to our right, knowledge. Bro. And he was the king. <laughs> One time is the rule. Right. Okay, come on. Second question. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, during Chapter 1043's cover page, there are apparently silhouettes of the Black Bear Pirates. <laughs> yeah. uh, 
Did they're on Whole Cake Island. I didn't see them. Oh, uh, oh, in the back. Yeah, okay, they're okay. very faint silhouettes, and oh. it's just speculation. But if you zoom in close, you can see a resemblance of Doc Q, Burgess, no and Blackbeard. <laughs> yes. What does this mean for the Big Mom Pirates, and what do you think will happen if this is true? I swear. These we... guys are checking right now. <laughs> wait, they don't know about this. Wait, wait. Yo, when you pull it out, show me. Because I remember looking yeah. at these shadows, Where? and I was like, there's not, it's not, I remember right. thinking One it's not piece, the Blackbeard Chapter Pirates. 1043. Three, the cover page where Oven is bringing yeah, Young Jin. Right all right, so if you look yeah, all the way at the bottom near the town, there's silhouettes. <laughs> uh, Trey's asking for his check because he dropped this in the Discord. <laughs> Trey, that's definitely you. Which one's supposed to be Doc Q then? Uh, I can the send you the, the, the Reddit link. The one all the But time. I would, and I don't know if it's coming to me, yeah, yeah, but I would mm -hmm. absolutely love it because one, it is a theory that I proposed a while ago that the Black Bear Pirates would go to Whole Cake Island, and I did take it from Arthur on Library of Mahara. But the cool point guy. being is, yeah, yeah, the point being is that Blackbeard always eats off of Luffy. At, throughout the series, he's always eaten something out of how Luffy impacted the world. Yeah. So Luffy going to Whole Cake Island and forcing Big Mom and her forces to split up and come to Wano was the perfect opportunity for him to continue that tread and get a... Uh, road pony glyph or yeah. whatever he wants on fish on Whole Cake Island, which to me would be a road pony glyph, Robbie. Mm. So I just want to see it because that is the mayhem and the recklessness that I want to see in general. Mm -hmm. Like Kata Curry's still recovering from his fight with Luffy, and it's like, oh man, a Yonko's crew's bearing down on us, and I got just oven because he'd finally start dealing with Marco level problems, and I want to see how he reacts to it <laughs> because when he gets smoked. I don't want to hear nothing from nobody. It's crazy. A dude got to get jumped in order to equal up to Marco's disappointment throughout the whole series. I mean, but keep going. I'm just saying he's going to be in the I'm same position. I'm just saying. You're not he saying gonna anything. He's going to be in the same position as Marco is in. But in general, Marco beyond got the, slumped by King. Beyond, by himself. Beyond the Marco's talk, in general, I do like that as a plot progression for the Blackbird Pirates for what he was talking about. Marco got... Cuffed up by a vice admiral. He always gets distracted. We gotta, we <laughs> gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta jump this. Katakuri to make sure he stands on equal footing Man, with Marco's listen. disappointment. Anyway, Stop. never mind. Go, Lawrence. I was gonna say, but what about Blackbeard's uh, whole thing that capitalizing on the Marines getting all of something, right? Remember that? What? Then he shipped out. Remember after we heard, um, the whole reverie thing about Wasabo? Mm -hmm. And he says, we can't let the Marines take everything. Then he says, boys, we're moving out. Right? Okay. Remember Lightmare saying that? Yeah. I think there's a couple different was, translations was, of that. Yeah, so I don't that's know what, what the say. actual translation is. One of them I saw was um, if they're not going to take it, then we'll take it. And I saw another one that said what you say. Yeah, that's yeah. the one I remember. Because so, my thought, in all honesty, what did Blackbeard want since pre time skip? Uh, pirate booty? <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, pretty much. Um, Ace, is, Ace, is on, Ace pretty much on his side, or Ace's ability on his side, right? We just got wind of Sabo possibly being, uh, possibly uh, like dying or being captured or whatever, right? So I'm thinking this is Black Retaco. If they're not going to take it, he's he's been taking dev uh, abilities, right? So he's going to go where Sabo is and try to take the fire fruit ability from Sabo to add it to his crew. That's what I'm thinking he was planning on doing. So, I mean, Obi Dobi chose the whole cake, but my mind was like, he's been targeting the fire fruit since pre time skip. If that were the case, though, why not get it on Marineford? Right? Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That is I mean, true. Was a lot I mean, there was are a you going to take Whitebeard's though, fruit? Or, 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 but, but, Ace, Ace was already dead, right? Man, like, by, the time he got, by the time he actually got Whitebeard's fruit, it's like, all right, Sengoku and Garp are bearing down on me. Yeah, yeah. And, and it kind of was like right there. And then Shanks rolls up. He's just like, ah. But then that has, the question becomes, how did Doflamingo end up getting the fruit in the first I place, right? No like, well, it's it probably crazy. just spawned. Like, I don't know. I thought it was... a the fact that he's an underground broker. Like, it spawns somewhere, like Larry's about right. to say, and, like, he has the connections. That was the point. Like, he has Somebody the connections. I feel like yeah. the knowledge of how Devil Fruits, like, respawn in general isn't, mm -hmm. like, that known. And this actually kind of goes into the Shanks theory, because, you know, Shanks was there. <laughs> I wonder what happened. It's funny that you say that, because... It's like you're eating a salad, and you have, like, an apple next to it, and it's just like, yo, what the... F <laughs> but then they actually... Didn't we find out that reveal with the Blackbeard Pirates? It came out to be, like, a... I may be making things up, but like didn't they show like a, a fruit just responding in a pile of fruits? No, no that, that was, was Punk Hazard. That was Punk Hazard. Okay, yeah. The axolotl thing, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. 
Um, yes. The other thing that I was going to say, uh, Sebastian was saying Blackbeard with, um, like, maybe he's on Whole Cake Island for Poneglyphs, right? One thing about that is, like, we kind of don't know, like, it. That, I don't think Blackbeard has ever mentioned Poneglyphs or ever been motivated by that. Like, mm-hmm. when you think about it, he showed up at Drum Island, right? He destroy, apparently destroyed Drum Island, and Chopper's upset about that. Why did he go there, right? Like, that's a little weird. And then he's also <laughs> went to um, Baltigo, right? The, like, the... Um, Jesus Burgess or whatever mm-hmm. he him him being there right like okay cool you're there they could have just picked him up but then he also like destroyed the island like what what's his motivation there right and it doesn't seem it's not like he would know that dragon had a poneglyph or anything right so it's like it's very interesting what Blackbeard's intentions are with everything because yeah. it's like everyone else is like we need to go find the one piece we need to find the mm-hmm. poneglyphs we need to do whatever right the Yonkos don't like they care now but they weren't doing that Blackbeard is the only one that's kind of just like going everywhere and just messing everything up, right? And we don't know why. We actually don't really know why he's doing that, right? I think the one he's time we probably saw... probably, like, super horny or something. <laughs> I mean, he just likes chaos. But, like, that he had Jewelry Bonnie tied up. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. Yeah. He was he trying, to, he was trying to flip her for a ship, He's right? trying to... He said, you, if you're my wife, right? Black, bro. He said, if you become my wife <laughs> and join the crew, he said something yeah, like that, yeah, right? Yeah. But, like, Tell when you think bro. about it, the whole island was on fire, and they left because the Navy was He coming. said, One Piece, I'm just trying to get a piece. <laughs> 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 you so I created a poll what? in the chat. <laughs> that one piece talk Civil War Team Sever Team Larry is 50-50 right now. I don't know how it's 50-50. He's always no, wrong. You're, you're up. Anyway, Lionel, go. <laughs> Um, that cover page actually did not even notice that Blackbeard or any, anything. Like I didn't notice anything in the shadows. But I do think that Blackbeard's the only one so far that didn't mention that he actually wanted to become Pirate King. Like he didn't. Like he just like when he came to me for the war, he said this era is my it's my age or my era. But he's right. We don't know Blackbeard's actual end game or goal. Yeah. Like we don't know his like if he really cares about being Pirate King. Probably thinks uh, I'm not trying to like make it a cliche, but probably kind of thinks he's trying to do something similar, maybe to what Rox is doing mm-hmm. and try to aim for the king of the world. Because I feel like if Black, I feel like Blackbeard is aiming something in something big, like it may Pirate King trying is part of it, but I feel like Black was trying to be something even higher than what the Pirate King is. Mm-hmm. So that's what my views are like. But we don't know Blackbeard's objective, but he just has seemed like he's scheming too much. So it seems like everything's almost calculated, everything's planned. So he's like. So I feel like there's something big with Blackbeard, just we don't know, but I think it might be linked with something with rocks, you know, with being king of the world. Yeah, That's my thing. Yeah. Loki doing what Kaido, what Kaido's doing. Blackbeard is Loki doing Kaido, kind of what Kaido's doing, but the whole gathering abilities. Mm-hmm. One's with smiles, but he's with, uh, I guess, abilities that he view is as prominent or rare or powerful. something. Yeah, powerful. Yeah. It's interesting. For me, it's like... It it speaks too much to Black like he's the most vaguest character besides Shanks, right? Like there's there's so much that happens with him but nothing at the same time. Yeah. But one thing that's been proven for Blackbeard is that he has a lot of knowledge. So I wouldn't even be like put off guard if he already knows what the road Pony Glyphs say before we even he even like decides to go see if they are. You know what I'm saying? Like I just assume because he knows Zebek. He named the ship after him that name was erased from history according to Sengoku so how would he know that we didn't know that as the readers until like what like 950 plus chapters so there's definitely something there that he knows something he knows about devil fruits obviously he knows the book we have never seen this book either but it exists and if he's collecting certain devil fruits that means he has even more knowledge of what devil fruits are prominent so maybe the ones that have had the biggest effects on the world you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it speaks volumes to him, but at the same time, it doesn't say anything about him at all, <laughs> which <laughs> makes me so frustrated with Blackbeard as a character. I understand why he's loved, but I don't get the same effect. I don't know if you guys are... You, have you watched Naruto? Yeah. I don't get the same effect as, like, Madara. You know? Like, Madara was a great villain. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably top five. But it's even though Madara was so vague for most of the show... When he finally entered and had his own, like, little, you know, thing, he was amazing. And I feel like until we get that Blackbeard moment where he solidifies himself as the final villain of the show, we won't ever think anything more of him than this intriguing mystery character who just happens to create destruction on islands. 
We don't know anything. He's so gonna, it's like he's gonna uh, end up being like a uh, hoardy. Hoardy <laughs> Jones. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh man. All right. So question number three. It's really hard to talk about anything else within the community these days because of the Joy Boy reveal during Chapter 1043. Also, the possibility of Luffy's Devil Fruit awakening and being something else than rubber. TCB scans, these are the guys who translate the chapter for us early, has stated that people who are regular spoiler readers should not spoil themselves with Chapter 1044. What could this possibly mean? And we'll start with Lionel. Wait, are you guys spoiler readers? Yeah. This, this side of the table is. Yeah. This that side, side okay. of the table is. I, I, don't, I, I stopped reading. Well, I mean, I got into the manga game really late, so then when people said that they're spoilers, I checked it out, and then I stopped, I think, 1037. Uh-huh. So after that, I haven't been. But then this one, I'm just like, oof. But then they said that, and I was like, all right, all right, fine, fine. If they're, I got to go back. Yeah, if they're saying not to, then, you know, I'm going to listen to that, you know? So you're in the middle. Like, that's funny. <laughs> you're in the middle no, of it. Yeah, yeah. No, and then, yes, we're not spoilers. What do you think, Lionel? What do you think this means? What do you think is coming? Like, yo, honestly, I have no idea. Because like, there's so many thought, pro- like so many thoughts, so many things that could happen, and it's like, and we're all waiting in anticipation of what it's gonna mean. Like, so honestly, I really don't really have anything because like, it it could go anywhere. I just have a thought of where Luffy's awakening, like the capabilities of Luffy's awakening, might be. That's just my thought. I already told Lawrence. I already told Sebastian. But where the chapter goes, because, like, people think, you know, they might go to um, with Zolo now. Like, mm-hmm. instead of Luffy being focused, might go to Zolo. I'm still thinking the flashback might happen soon. Um, so The honestly, Kaido flashback. Yeah, the Kaido flashback, okay. which we all, again, we all want to happen. So, like, yeah, I have no idea. But, like, it just, we just know off that. And I think, I don't know if that ever happened before, that telling the people who read spoilers not to read these spoilers. <laughs> like, that's crazy. So, like, something big is going on, and... We're like, and I think it's like everybody's just like, we want to know. Like, yeah. We want to know. So. What about you, Law? Honestly, it's going to be big. Like, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be big. How um, big, bro? <laughs> Luffy, <laughs> elephant, and <nothing. laughs> Hey, yo. <laughs> so, because I was actually thinking, too, um, like, uh, when I when Lionel was reading that uh, uh, scan about it, and it made me think of honestly going back to retract what I said about earlier about like because like, I kept thinking like out of all ones uh, like out of the D's it kind of bothered me that Luffy didn't smile dying right supposedly right yeah if if Luffy did in fact die he didn't smile right but then we see him smile when he awakens mm-hmm. right P- pun intended because he just awoke up and then possibly awakened his fruit. Anyway, yeah, so... Um, Good one, bro. <laughs> just awakens. But then it made me think of, like, how Joy Boy's here. It would be big is the fact that this is, is Luffy, right? Mm-hmm. That he acquired the title of Joy Boy. And it made me think of, what if that smile was just like, Luffy coming back to life, his heart just stopped. Like, he didn't fully die, his heart stopped, and he came back to life. And he's just smiling, just like, I can be Kaido. Right, like realizing, like the ability that he he just awoken his ability, and with this newfound power of awakening his ability, with all that he learned, Kaido can't like you know Kaido can't die. Mm-hmm. Luffy kind of realizing I'm like Kaido too. He's I, like, damn, yo, plot. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like uh, he bounces right back up, like because I'm trying to think of, uh, like uh, not Luffy restarted his heart himself, mm. but like maybe using a rubber jolt, whatever, like pretty much bouncing it or awakening, helped him come back to life, mm. right? Well, his life just stopping. So let me think of like Luffy, that's Luffy's smile, and what he's about to whip out with his awakening mixed with all his other uh, things, realizing that he's now on the level of Kaido, right? I guess. So pretty much with his <laughs> awakening. Like, because uh, I was thinking about the found joy, joy by what it means as if that jo- Luffy's been Jobe the whole time, but it's more like he's coming into knowing uh, what that means for him. Mm-hmm. Like, his own realizing, pretty much like uh, how Luffy said he's not the Pirate King when he lost, right? We're like, no, I can do this. Like, uh, kind of like, Kaido can't stop me. Mm. I just got, um, he just kind of, like, Kaido got kind of like helped with the uh, CP0 being stopped. But like, even this attack didn't kill me, right? And this is the strongest result. So like, Luffy's like, I'm always going to bounce back. It's crazy. Yeah. Seems like nobody could beat him. <laughs> what about you, you just lost. <laughs> you just lost. In terms of the chapter, 
I have no idea, <laughs> right? Like, the, I like having this kind of communication where they're telling you to not to look is kind of wild. But, yeah, that is kind um, of. Wild. I'm hoping that they don't um, say the name of the fruit yet because I have a video coming out and I like, <laughs> I'm like, it's like I need to put that out. That was that was the one thing like with the spoilers. I was like, yo, like, do I still make this video? Because like, if they just say what it is, then I'm wrong. Then it's like no point in making this video. But honestly, during this conversation, I kept on having like this thought. I was like, oh my god, wait, the theory is making way more sense. Mm. Um, and one of the things I was thinking about was, um, you know, how Blackbeard he's like collecting fruits, right? Mm. And I was just thinking like, if he's supposed to be like this end game character, right? There's probably Probably something involved with collecting fruits and being able, like, because we don't actually know what happens if you eat multiple devil fruits. We're just told that you can't, right? Mm -hmm. And Blackbeard is a special person, and then we don't know how, but he's able to. And now he's collecting fruits, um, and he has some kind of affinity for the fire fruit, possibly, you know, whatever. And then I was kind of thinking, like, if he's supposed to be the opposite of Luffy, then um, my theory that I thought of before was in it kind of means that. Um, and I have a really good naming thing. I ran it by Artur, actually. He, he knows Japanese. And yeah. I was like, damn, this is nice. <laughs> but um, so when you think about it, Blackbeard's collecting fruits, right? And mm -hmm. when you think about, like, Thriller Bark, like, Luffy was able to put multiple shadows to the point where, like, mo most people wouldn't be able to tolerate that. So it's like, what if Luffy could also do that same thing? And so the theory that I had was, um, and I'll just name drop it here because, like, the thing's spoilers coming out tomorrow. So, like, <laughs> I might as well do it now if I can't get my video. But the idea was that this is a way that I would keep it the Gomu Gomu no Mi would be that um, the fruit's name would be the Shushu no Mi. And so Shushu means collection. And the thing about devil fruit names is that they they run by onomatopoeia. Mm. And so the onomatopoeia for Shushu, the Shushu was, Shu was actually in 1043 when Luffy blows out air. Mm. The kanji for Shu is right there. And so you say Shushu, that's collection fruit. So when you say Shushu, that's collection. When you just say Shu, um, it can mean other things. And so the onomatopoeia would be um, fire rising. Mm. Um, or uh, snake hissing. Those are the, that's what the onomatopoeia in Japanese are. And then you think about Luffy's snake man, snake hissing, and then the whole fire stuff. He randomly has a fire power. And there's a lot more to the theory that, like, I would just take up the whole episode if I just dropped everything. <laughs> but the reason why I was just like, wait, this kind of makes sense. If we're saying Blackbeard's collecting devil fruits, like, the way I'm saying Luffy's fruit works is that he works by... Um, collecting willpower, collecting mm -hmm. things from people. And we kind of see that with Ace. Ace dies, then he gets the fire fist. And it's progressively, as we go on with the story, it's the people at the beginning were saying it's friction-based. Well, I was like, now you... Uh, like where's the friction some like in the animation also they're just showing him just yeah. pull out fire and then he's immune to fire too now and so it's like there's so many different elements to um you know from the very beginning where ace i'm not ace luffy is just going through the story and collecting willpowers and one of the biggest ones and this is um i'll include this in my video is that um there's one pirate beyond katakuri that luffy c connected with the most do you guys know who i'm talking about which pirate Bellamy. This is the one pirate, one antagonist. He, at the end of it, called him a friend. In the chapter that Bellamy lost right before Doflamingo, mm -hmm. it's called um, the final fight, his final fight. And that, so after he beats Bellamy down that time, right, Bellamy puts his life on the line as a pirate. He said, I'm going to, like, I'm literally dying for this because I followed the wrong pirate. Mm -hmm. And so um, Luffy beats him, and then right after that, he's no longer a pirate. He's dying. He's making flags for people. He's a dyer now. That's his new profession. So he's no longer a pirate. Luffy literally killed him as a pirate. And what's interesting is when you think about Bellamy's power, he's bouncing off of things, right? Similar to what did Lu Luffy five chapters later? So this this um the Bellamy fight was um I think it was like 769 or something or 779 and then 785 mm -hmm. was um Luffy pulls out Python. Python literally looks exactly like Bellamy's fighting style. Literally, there's no... The, the panels, you could just put them side by side. It's the same thing. So when you look he at not it, only takes different 
willpowers, but he can also take yeah. different devil fruit. And and like or how he's them. able to do it, we don't know. But that's my point. Is like somehow, some way, he's able to collect these things. And you think of rubber. Rubber is a very malleable, you know, adaptable thing. And so mm-hmm. the um, you know, how is it still the Gomu Gomu no Mi? And why did the Gorosei name it that rather than the Shushu no Mi? Because if you knew it was a collection fruit, how would you, how would you use that fruit? You know that you have to collect things, right? So mm-hmm. that that's a problem. If you know that that's how you have to run through like with this fruit and collect things and beat people that's already an automatic win but why would they name it that it's like it was probably collected previously that this gomu gomu power was there and so when the gorosei is looking like what should we name it because it has to be something that the people can use they chose the stupidest power that they could think of right if you had a bunch of powers in there and the rubber is there you don't think anybody's gonna Mm -hmm. run through the world with the rubber right and so that they're like that's why we renamed it this. We didn't think there'd be some dumbass who just running through the grand line. <laughs> that would mean it's just one for all. Like right. I, I don't like <laughs> the idea of that. So, and, so what's interesting though is like people might say that, and then the the interesting part is like Oda came up with it first, and he's been demonstrating it. I think in a very different way, where it's like it, if you think about it and for the people that know um um my hero academy it's like imagine you gave the all for one power and you only had black whip like that's so <laughs> that's so dumb <laughs> right so <laughs> well, well, hold on hold on but this is the difference too for like uh, why luffy is so great yeah. it's because of the fact that he, he wills took himself that. to you know do the impossible and it's like i i guess that's one of the issues that i'm having now with him beating kaido is because if he has this sort of how, how, how can I say it? It's just he doesn't necessarily have the ability, but every time we've seen him fight, he's always pulled the dub through his means. Yeah. But now if he has a different means and he's given this power where he hasn't earned it, it kind of goes against the whole show and also his whole character. So so th- that's where I think, um, you know, and and uh, this is, like, really important to One Piece. It's like, I, I, I'll keep referencing this starfish, that Papagu, Papagu. Papagu. He willed himself to talk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he, because why? From the very, his birth, he believed he was human, right? <laughs> He's really a Jamaican f- starfish. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, is, is, that, so is that the story of him? Yeah, I'm, like, that I'm has, blanking on that. No, he wanted to become a human. No, he wasn't thought, like, he, he he was from human. birth, he thought he was human, so he never doubted that. He just was able to speak from birth, right? Yeah. So with Luffy, right? <laughs> Yo, <what is> so <laughs> for, for Luffy, right, from the very beginning, he's told it's the Gomu Gomu no Mi. That's what he believes. That's what it's going to stay as. That's what I believe. I don't. I think that even with this power, it's more so like he's just incorporating wills like his brother Hold and on. whatever. So I don't remember which happened first, but did Shanks tell him it was the rubber rubber fruit before he actually start like started stretching? So the because um, that's the only way I'll accept that. You know what I'm saying? Like right, right. Because if Shanks told him before he mm-hmm. started stretching, all right, then I believe that. But if Luffy just whenever Shanks grabbed his feet and he just like yeah. fell down, I think in the anime did Shanks said it after. I think the anime added the uh, the dropping one, but I think he had the he arm pulling, him. Him. and arm in him. the same page it was like Lucky Roo. Like, like said it and okay, then so that arm Shanks, stretch right. happened before Shanks told him. So that. and and that's where it's like important, where it's like this Gomu Gomu no power is like integral to the thing, right? So it's kind of like oh, you have man. to add to it. And so the reason why I thought about this was like it's really important to think about why the Gorosei all of a sudden needs him needs him to be defeated before Kaido, right? Why wouldn't they wait until after Kaido runs his course through Luffy? Why wouldn't they wait till afterwards? Because then they could just cherry pick, right? I mean, they didn't know Zunisha was there. So, but oh, do, we she, have, do we have confirmation that the Gorosei came, ever when, recognized Zunisha? We have that last panel on 1037, well, but they never so there, acknowledged Zunisha. So those three pages, right? Because it's back to back to back. It goes, the Marines or the CP0 says right. there's like a floating island. Yeah. And then they say it's moving. Right. Then the Gorosei happen, and then they go, oh, go after Luffy. Uh, the the fruit's name is different. You know, we change. Well, they it. don't tell them. They don't tell that to the the people on the ship. Like, there's no confirmation that the people on the ship were talking to the Gorosei. Yeah, right? that's true too. That's true too. But right. the only thing is, Zunisha appears in the next page and then it yeah. ends the chapter. So like, my thing is, so like, it's they, like, if Zunisha's there, why wouldn't they like tell the CP Zero like, yo, there's a giant fucking elephant here. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta speed this shit up, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like, they, they why wouldn't they mention that at all? It, the, 
they, the one thing they said was like, you have to beat Luffy mm-hmm. before right now. Like, there's no, there's no like time. It's now or never. You have to beat him, right? Well, it, it's also, it depends. It's because how what happened during the Reverie with Shirahoshi as well. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, we have to assume that Shirahoshi probably they they know she's an alliance with Luffy. So mm-hmm. that means like Luffy has a ancient weapon under his belt. He has Frankie, who knows probably of some sort of the Pluton. But what if Momonosuke, who's probably going to be on his side if they win the battle against Kaido, he's like a mini Shirahoshi. So in a sense, he's like a fourth ancient weapon. So yeah. if he could control Zo, Zo could just take out Marine Ford if they don't like right, attack right. it. So they're probably just scared that Luffy's ability to create all these allies would then fold in like he has now two ancient weapons realistically so the thing is it's like we the, the, it's we don't know how connected the Gorosei are to Onigashima in the sense of how much information they're getting, mm-hmm. right? Like, because they didn't know whether Robin was captured. The CP0 didn't even know, but they were they were like, I'm assuming she's already captured by now. I'm pretty sure there was a line like that, like, she's probably captured by now or something, but the CP0 wasn't even close. So it's like they're not actively talking, and I doubt that they are getting play-by-plays, right? Like mm-hmm. the NBA or something, right? They're not getting play-by-plays like that. And so my th- with the collection thing is like if the contingency is like they can't wait until it, if there's a world where Luffy beats Kaido that's really bad why because he could possibly collect something from Kaido that's why I was like he, the whole awakening hmm. I see part, where you're going with that right because it, it, other than that there's why would if I was the Gorosei I'd be like okay strongest person in the world fighting Luffy I'm just going to wait until whatever happens afterwards. And it's like they... Or it could be the whole America (laughs) equals Kaido thing where they're like, yo, if he takes out Kaido, we no longer now can get weapons. But so, but they they already um, earlier, I forget what chapter, but the CP0 is like, regardless of the outcome of this battle, we're preparing We're going to eat regardless. Yeah, yeah. Um, So like, it doesn't matter which side wins. They said that. So they did at that point, they didn't care if Luffy won or Kaido. They didn't care. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until they started thinking about the fruit yeah. and then they were like wait a second then after the next conversation it's like so, it's immediate oh, it's on site it can, so part it can my, go in my, so many ways <laughs> yeah, yeah, it can, my, it my can. pushback is because I like your theory I do the collection theory. I haven't even said all of it Oh, yeah. I'll have to wait for the video yeah, if you yeah. drop it but is it better than my theory is the question <laughs> 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 I'm but in general I mean so and to, to answer the original question was I'm trying to remember what it is. Uh, my 1044 is so 10 crazy. Well, one, man, I don't care what this, what TCB says. I'm going to read them spoilers. Bro. I don't <laughs> care. It's the kind of person I am. No, nah, I'm going to try to wait this week. I'm going to try. I'm not. Um, do it, do it. I'm, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Larry, it takes me. willpower. Larry be spoiling me, even when I'm trying not to. I don't Yo, know. I got to stay with Larry. Yo, I got to stay with Larry. Just text me. I'm like, all right, bro. Yo, but, if something um, crazy happened, I'm texting you, bro. But, yeah. but that's why I alluded to my theory, is that yeah. they, they, shift, they shift focuses from Robin Mm-hmm. Immediately after Zunisha came. Right. So maybe they're not getting a full play by play, but they know if they have the knowledge of the prophecy and it's like, oh, Luffy's fulfilled so much of it, we can't take the risk that he comes into contact with um, Zunisha. But this is right. the you know only I mean? pushback I have. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't you take Luffy out way before this? Um, well, them not realizing the fruit, right? Like because then when they put the fruit into context, that it's that's why I think it mm-hmm. is the fruit, his fruit, because it's like I mean, that's what changed ever we, since. Before, but the framing right? of the chapter is Zunisha being the fruit. Like that's exactly. what the cliffhanger. That's true. That's it true. would be a full like. Hold on, you know they they know he has the collection fruit. Or, I just want to point out that yeah. the framing of that chapter also kind of parallels with the framing of Joy Boy over Luffy right now, mm-hmm. where it's like. If if Zunisha isn't the fruit, then it might also be that Joy Boy isn't Luffy. Like it, it's kind of parallel in that yo, way. I've been saying it. Yo, Momonosuke <laughs> might really be Joy Boy. Yo. So so there's actually a panel. <laughs> might be. No. So yeah, like this, just, oh. this is a straight up <laughs> yeah, meme. Yeah, but yeah. like like you know the you guys use the thumbnail too from uh, 253. Like the the they're they're on Skypea the drum right. Yeah. The drums of liberation. That's supposed to be Joy Boy. Who's playing the drums in that? Oh my so God. the drums are his heartbeat. No, he's saying Usa. No, no, bro. but. Usa's oh. playing the drums there. <laughs> so, so I, like, this is a mean thing, but later on in Skypea, there was an interesting thing where um, they were talking about the pyro blow-in on, um, yeah. on the thing. And so 
there was the next panel wide on the thing. It was uh, Joy Boy. It was Usopp and Luffy, and they were both like acting like they knew what Pyro Blowing was. And Usopp was like, I used to play with that as a kid when I th- played with it. And it's just like Usopp saying some shit like that. It's like, wait a second, mm-hmm. is he? Is this? And then Luffy did the same thing. And so if you think that Luffy's son got I'm not Mika, liking where you're going with and this. Then, <laughs> this is the only theory I don't support. <laughs> I, I didn't make a video on it. I'm just Listen, saying. Don't. I'm just saying that it's like <laughs> Usopp don't deserve any credit. Oda, Oda trolls a lot, and that's a crazy troll. Like for him to point out that that chapter was like that panel was his favorite thing, mm. and the emphasis on the drums. And I think um, I forget I, whether I was on stream. I forget where I was, but um. Someone was saying that, um, and, and Oda, I don't know if you guys know this, but Oda is like one of his favorite manga of all time is Your Lie in April. And he's just like one of the biggest things is like music and uh, like doing anything with music is very difficult. So you commended the mm-hmm. author for doing that. And someone was saying, I think Artur was saying it to me actually, that, um, that Oda said that, uh, oh yeah, yeah, you know, like um, the onomatopoeia for like hitting and stuff like that. It's very different than in other mangas where it's like they'll use a boom sound or a clash sound. And Oda specified that it had to be a drum sound. Mm-hmm. It had to be. And so that drum, like, I was just, and then uh, everyone always brings up Drum Island and like drums are really important. And drums of liberation now. And it's like, so why would he have Usopp playing the drums? That's just like, like, so, that's some Oda so level far, troll. We have a guy in our Discord named Triz, um, uh-huh. and he came up with this amazing drums of liberation theory yeah, that yeah. he posted on reddit um and i think it's it's blown up a bit um i don't know if it was directly from him but he had like looked up so much research it was like par vision level research mm-hmm. that he was doing as far as like west african tribes and yeah, uh, was pretty he was relating every single d clan member right to um references to drummers or drum sets or drum like lore oh, in wow. in the real world and he went down from Rob, like uh, Roger to to Rouge to Ace to Saul, all of them. Okay. And so I'll have to send you that. Um, yeah, yeah. Triz, post a link in the Discord when you get a chance. But I just the drums. It could be anything, man. I don't know about Usopp per se. Yeah, I mean, uh, that, like obviously, when you make theories, right? Like, there's you have to have multiple. You can't have one. And then that one, I was just like, nah. Let's like, is this you. it? Is this it? Like Usopp. <laughs> Ain't and nothing relating to him, bro. Yo, remember last <laughs> time? His dad left Remember him, in Dressrosa? <laughs> He didn't do shit. And what happens? He becomes God Usopp. Listen, man. Listen, Don't man. sleep on Usopp. That's all I, I got a back par on this His one. His dad went for milk, never came back. <laughs> He's <laughs> not good, bro. I'm just saying, saying the, the, same question, same man. the parallel, Piece right? Dead, like, <laughs> you can say about every yeah, One Piece yeah, dad. Yeah. Every single dad in One Piece is a terrible father. Yeah. Except Kinemon, who's not even a dad. Uh, Lowell's parents... Odin was pretty We're solid, right? Real. Odin, he had his kid on a pirate ship. <laughs> that's a lot, yeah, that's a lot of negligence there. Out. I don't know. Lowell's parents weren't bad. They were doctors. They were, I mean, if you compare them to the One Piece parents, they're great. But, like, <laughs> who knows what they were actually out here doing, man? Yeah, bro. They could have so. been involved in, like, a whole lot of gang stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. All right. At least they stayed. So, fourth, <laughs> exactly. fourth question? Yeah. All right. So, I think this is a pretty good uh, question. This question is influenced and comes from Soba Sanji on TikTok. Oh. He's probably one of my favorites to follow on TikTok. Um, He mentions, imagine Oda never threw away the idea of bounty hunters. Mm -hmm. Zoro was hunting uh, pirates as a way of living. Bounty hunters could have been a perfect replacement for the Shichibukai, and we could have seen possibly... One on the level of Yonko. What do you guys think about this? And we'll go with Sebastian first. All right, so when you say s- s- replacement for the Shijibu guy, you mean like after they got the, 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 well, like, demolished? You have to under- or I would say the bounty hunters are there. Mm-hmm. They've always been there. But the Shichibukai are now gone. Okay. And the bounty hunters kind of okay. like take their place in a way. All right, okay. I thought you were saying like the Shichibukai never existed in the series. No, they exist. Okay, okay. No, they exist. Well, hell, hell yeah. There, there's no reason why bounty hunters aren't more prevalent. I mean, I guess we don't have time for all that. Mm-hmm. But yeah. you could have just wrote one super dope bounty hunter, super dope group of bounty hunters and made an arc about it. We talk all the time about how there should have been an arc before Wano, before Luffy dealt with it. Easily could have made that a bullet situation where bounty hunters were trying to get bullet. Whatever. Just 
bounty hunters should have been more prevalent in the series because as of now, bounties are just a power scaling tool that people use at this point. Like they're not they're not what they sh- could or should be in the series. And I love them mm-hmm. because they they they're so hype and stuff, but like in general, like they don't do much other than create a number and then we have to guess about what the number is and stuff like that. Like it's something to talk about, but if you had people actively trying to collect these bounties, like Luffy sailing and it's not just marines going after him, it's some mm-hmm. super hawks bounty hunter just, like say Crocodile had a, a, a group of bounty hunters like not Crocodile per se but somebody like Crocodile created an organization of bounty hunters mm. like I think the closest thing we got was the guy John or Gene on Gene Bandit yeah the Bandit dude on Dress Rosa, Rosa in, the, in, the, in the Coliseum and it's like mm. you could have expanded on that on like a whole nother level and just not even it doesn't even need to be a crazy long arc like 15 to 20 chapters just do that introduce a super strong character have Luffy have to fight them deal with that maybe somebody does get maybe they try to collect Usopp's bounty you know what I mean like you could deal with a lot and I know I said Usopp just to troll you but in general <laughs> but in general that's he's a weaker member of the crew with a high bounty like Lu, Usopp's bounty is higher than his actual skill level is to this point Yeah. in most people's opinion not mine but whatever but you get what I'm saying mm. bounty hunters would have been dope and, and I know they agree over there so what about you Law? Honestly, me and Lionel have been going, but talking about this for a good minute. Where it doesn't make, I'm not gonna say it doesn't make sense, but like Sebastian was saying, you want it should have been more, uh, more in the show. Like, for example, they're going like DC terms, DC terms in uh, in the DC universe, Los uh, Lavos, um, Lobos? Los Lobos. What's his name? That you the University bounty hunter. I'm saying, what's it? Lobo. 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 Thank yeah. you, Mar. Yeah, Lobo from the DC Universe. That first? That he <laughs> no, popped into the <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up, Mar. MCU all day. Yeah, but like, Lobo. I know oh. you guys can't hear him, but Marv spoke. Oh. <laughs> Lobo from the DC Universe, like, he's a universal bounty hunter, and he's crazy strong. Like, someone he could even fight Superman, right? But having that aspect in One Piece would have made the show even better, even greater. Because now, like, you have all these crazy high bounty hunters, uh, bounty, bounties in One Piece from pirates and whatever, yet who's trying to collect them? You know, right. like who's actually going after? Because you said it, they would just hear Ace's bounty and they would drill. They would see this person's bounty and be like, oh, but no one's strong enough to go after them. And how dope it would have been were like uh, either a few bounty hunters or the same one as strong that keeps coming after the straw hats. Like you only hear the main battles we see is like pirates and pirates and marines and pirates. Why aren't bounty hunters on this level? Like, because this is money to be taken. The Right now, the two biggest bounty hunters we got was Gene Gambit, I mean Bandit, and Zoro. And he became a pirate, you know? Like, pretty much, where are the rest of the bounty hunters? Because it should be like a, just like we see like a class of uh, pirates, there should have been a class of bounty hunters. Mm-hmm. And honestly, even Bandits. Like, this is a world where like everyone's profession, because they show a little, we got a little bit more of that in Desrosa, where we're seeing uh, military might and uh, officers there. And we see one, ba- one bounty hunter. And he was saying he was going after the level six prisoners. But there should be stronger ones to rival even, this is maybe too much, but, like, who's go, what band that could go after the Yonko? Not one, you know? Yeah. It's just like, it would have made the show a lot better and gave actually more, like, more stuff you could do with the show of more potential fighters for the Straw Hats or other pirates, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like uh, fighting Yonko or fighting the Marines, where you have people, like, even you have a band that has, like, a sense of justice. Not only does he collect bounties, but... He does it to feed his family and to take down these pirates who are running amok. So you I don't, know? I don't know if you can have a Yonko level bounty hunter. Yeah. There should be. It would be no. Dope. There should. Yes, be. it would. There be. shouldn't because then every other pirate that's not on that level is just getting collected. Yo, and taken to the, Imagine Oda's just country. sitting right there and he's like, "Bro, is it not enough?" <laughs> <laughs> no. What I mean is like, if you're say you're not Yonko level and you don't have the yon- a backing of a Yonko and this Yonko level bounty hunter bears down on you. You're getting locked. Like, that's it. There's, no, there's nothing you could do. There would just be the Yonko and that guy until any pirate I ends mean, up defeating him. There would be a league of, like, Bro. assassins in a way. <laughs> yes. Because I mean, there would be a top dog running these assassins or bounty hunters. So I've, I've always talked about this, too. Like, I at a certain point, these bounties that the Yonko level people get, they don't mean anything, don't right? Because there's nobody who's cashing in on them. But the, another point that I want to make is, like, Technically, when you think about the warlords, they kind of are the bounty hunters. Because, like, 
Mario what did Blackbeard was. do? Yeah, Moria, <laughs> Moria was he. I'm pretty sure he was allowed to cash in because he was a warlord, and his position in the in the Grand Line was to filter out the pirates. And so he was a and as a warlord, it's not like he, they're going after him. Mm-hmm. So they get um. Dang, another twenty dollars super chat. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Thank you. It gets like this. Um, and so the uh, you know Moria was that, and then Crocodile was also he had Baroque works, right? That's a that's a um, bounty hunter mm-hmm. thing. So um, that's two of them, and both of them were kind of like filtering out pirates and getting out certain things. So when you think about it, the warlords were kind of like bounty hunters, and then you also think about it, um, Blackbeard's admission into the warlords. He collected Ace's bounty, essentially. Like, I don't know if he got the money from it, but he became a warlord after he gave them Ace, right? You think like, they uh, paid him? So did I'd be so, did so mad. <laughs> I don't know if they paid him. But when you think about the the whole point of bounty hunters and what they're supposed to do, mm-hmm. huh. the warlords kind of did do that. Some of them, some of them. We don't well, we don't know about like Kuma, what what you know he was doing. Um Dofi wasn't doing that. Dovamingo, but Dovamingo <laughs> had an interesting. Uh, Dovamingo had an interesting, uh, you know, system on his own, right? Yeah. Like being where he was, he could do whatever he yeah, wanted. Yeah, he had right? infinite money as far as we knew. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think we skipped Lionel. Though, my bad. Go Lionel. <laughs> <laughs> he was just like in trance. He's like, yo, this is so good. <laughs> now you guys pretty much said um, what I kind of agree with. The only thing I have is um, like the whole about well, bounties being stronger than what we've seen. Is mostly the show is mostly about willpower. Can you like what bounty hunter is gonna have a strong willpower than these people trying to become pirates? Hold on, hold on, bro. On. He was yeah, a bounty hunter. I was gonna say. Yeah, but I get you. But he, his profession wasn't a bounty hunter. He just took up that name because he needed money and he needed new swords. But his whole dream was becoming okay, the I world's greatest sword. I, I get you. I get hold you. on, that's a will of its own. Like, you might not think it's a big will, but it's a will unless, you know, of itself. I I think what he's saying, though, is more like someone like Zoro and Mihawk, right? They weren't necessarily bounty hunters for the sake of bounty hunters. They were like, I'm going to be the strongest. I am the strongest. They could have had Mihawk bounty hunting as a hobby. But we still don't don't know how Mihawk runs himself. Because that was something I talked about in the Kaido video, where it's like at a certain level with the pirates, like... They're, they Oda has been introducing like financial like backing to mm-hmm. to a certain extent, and so it's like at the end of the day, when you think about the bounties that matter, they're not worth getting because the people are that strong, right? Mm-hmm. So th- you have to have Mihawk. Like Mihawk would be the only pirate who doesn't have a crew who can sail on his own, and you know, like how else is he making money, right? Everyone else has territories. Stripping. Everyone else is. <laughs> He's a, he's a vampire stripper. Like, he's using Perona. Like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> we, we did get no, a super No, Perona's shot. like, yo, I'm going to throw some, like, negativity at you. <laughs> and that's how he boosts his willpower and gets stronger. <laughs> that's, fine. that's a good training. Um, we did get a super chat consistent with this question. It's from Amanda Hug, Hug and Kiss. That's <laughs> $20. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amanda. Thank, Thank you. you. It says, uh, hey, don't sleep on Johnny and Yusaku <laughs> now. They are tired. <laughs> they are, they have Yo, a time I now. forgot about those two. I yeah. mean, oh, <laughs> what man. they do? <laughs> no, they're not doing that. <laughs> yep. Because, <laughs> dang it. <laughs> yeah, here's a good question. Do you think Oda's gonna bring back those characters like yes. Jin? Yes. Like, oh my god, was, I hope Jin comes. Yeah, back. like yeah. Jin, th- yeah. some of these Jin. characters are meant to be brought back. Not a no. Were you one of those people that thought Jin could be who's who? Who's no? I didn't think that. <laughs> I, I was one of those. But people. someone said that uh, he could be Green Bull, and I was like, wait, no. Was, nah. I, for a second, I was like, maybe, but then I was like, I don't think that would make yeah, sense for him to join the. And now coming back. <laughs> yeah, Anel's coming back. back. Yeah, I'm coming yeah, back. Yeah, and now I don't believe it. And he gonna die. Now no. going back for the world thing that Lido was saying, <laughs> you could have someone trying to be the world's greatest bounty hunter. That's yeah. like collecting the highest bounty. Exactly. You're going to die. Yeah. But that, you <laughs> that understand would, that that's, would, that's like Dragon and Kaido yeah. right now, right? You get a you don't die. know Dragon's yeah. ca- bounty, though. You, you got to work your way up to it. Do you think uh, Dragon's bounty is higher? He should have the highest. Because, you know, low key, he. If it's higher, is it because he's stronger? Didn't they say he was his was the highest? No, yeah, the most, most wanted, wanted man. Listen, if he hasn't killed a celestial dragon with his bare hands, <laughs> I don't see him having a bigger bounty than like Kaido. It's, he it's should though. I'm serious. Honestly, going by what they said, he should have a higher bounty than Whitebeard. 
Maybe Listen, even Roger. Man, he just going after things that they scared of. Because have you noticed? That's it. When they're trying to overturn something that he can't do when the government by was, himself. When the government was breaking down bounties, Preach, Larry. <laughs> when the government was breaking down bounties, they said that Whitebeard and Go Roger had the highest bounty, right? For but pirates. they only said for pirates. They didn't say in the world Listen, or in general. Did they explicitly say pirates. Just yeah. pirates. I'm gonna be real as hell with so, y'all. Dragon gonna disappoint us. <laughs> no, he's not. He's not gonna... Straight up, I'm calling it now. See, I'm a big dragon supporter, but I believe you. Yo, I believe you. <laughs> I'm telling I like you. This support, you know what? When he got shook, when when Kai, when uh, Sabo got whatever happened to him, his face when he was reading Listen, the newspaper. Man, he won't even be calling the shots. Like, come on, son. I, but to be fair, I was like, come on. Son. To be fair, <laughs> Kaido right hasn't rolled up on Marineford either. You would think no, that somebody with a widow's peak as deep as his <laughs> <laughs> nah, would be more. Nah, nah, you know what? You know what? Kaido. I mean, dragon right where he need to be in that Vegeta lane. Not relevant. <laughs> Come on, bro. Like, Not relevant. Bro. You mean like Marco? <laughs> same. Oh, he's okay. same okay. Chance he okay. gets, he brings up Marco. Okay. Is he the I'm, hater? I'm, there's two things I feel like Oda should have added where he kind of messed up on. Was one, the bounty hunter thing. Also, other swordsmen trying to become the greatest swordsman. Oh, yeah, because yeah. there's like two, right? Uh, yes. yes. And everybody's like, yo, Mihawk over Shanks. Yeah. Yeah. Who Mihawk beat? <laughs> oh, my God. Who Mihawk beat? Me and Nobody. Me and Lambert talk about Zola has not come across one person besides Mihawk trying to become the world's greatest He, he, yeah, he yeah. came across that Russ Russ dude. That went hard for a second. <laughs> <laughs> that Russ Russ guy was crazy. Yo, you remember that or not? No, I don't. You don't remember? Was that filler? Russ, it might have been filler, bro. No. Zoro, that, Zoro that, fought oh, yeah, a Marine that couldn't rust anything. Oh, oh, oh. They rusted the sword. That was in his Bro, he was like... He caught the sword. I know he's like, he was about to, he caught Zoro. Yo, future sight. <laughs> yeah, imagine, yo, future imagine sight. his training. He's just sitting there catching guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you know, blow Larry's mind. You know, who, you know who beat him for Zoro? Usopp. Usopp. I remember. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> All right, so we so we go on any other questions because I'm all uh, out. I have I have a question. Well, go more ahead. of a comment. Um, it's about your Kaido analysis yeah. video, and I thought it was absolutely phenomenal. Um, Thank it's you. something as you were bringing up about Kaido being like America, and you were referencing mm-hmm. the opioid crisis, uh, slavery, um, the mass incarceration system, right. his connection to all the world weapons and everything. And there's one thing that I don't think that you brought up that really vibed with me when I, after I saw it, and it relates to Wano itself. Kaido's currently trying to drop an A-bomb on the... Japanese equivalent of yeah, yeah. oh my god! <laughs> so it's like no, I didn't even realize really, that he really is America. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I didn't want to bring the the Japanese stuff into it because I like not that I didn't want to be disrespectful, but like mm-hmm. I need to do way more research to make it make sense. Okay. But I did mention that like his presence mm-hmm. on Wano is very similar to America's presence in Japan mm-hmm. after World War II. Like, we, America screwed up so many things for them, and, sure. like, and, and they're still dealing with it, right? And, and one, another connection that I never brought up was, like, uh, one of the things after World War II is Japan was never allowed to have a defense, uh, um, uh, an offensive army. They had only could have a defensive force. And you think about Wano, too, all the samurais were either labor force mm-hmm. or you joined his beast pirates. Like, right. there was no other thing. It was pretty much crippling their ability and, you know, like, I think um, Akainu, he he was afraid, not afraid, but he, he held them in high regard. Like, that's an island of samurais. We're not messing with them, right? Like, and he does, in his basis is probably Odin, right? But, like, it's kind of just one of those things where... Um, uh, I feel like n- not just with Kaido. I think Kaido was like, because when you think about it, right, the U.S. is like a world power, right? And... Um, when you think about world powers, it makes sense that Oda would use the U.S. as a reference source for all the world powers in One Piece. And so that, I think Kaido was the heaviest one, but Big mm-hmm. Mom shared a lot. You think about the the Navy, like them having bases all across the world, right? There's so many references, and it like it sounds like, oh, like, but Oda's Japanese, like, why would he use that? But it's like, the U.S. is a world power. They affected history so much, and, right. and you know, I, I always think about this uh, thing with with a lot of things. It's like, you can be the hero, but you, if you live long enough, you end Become up... Become the villain. Uh, right? <laughs> and so, um, in a lot of ways, I think, like, the the world government is an example of that, where it's like, maybe maybe they start off with great intentions, or they were good, or whatever it was, but they stayed long enough, and they are now seeing themselves um, being seen as the villain by everybody, right? So, um, I think that concept plays, like as an inspiration for a lot of things that Oda did, and Kaido especially. Low-key, like, Parvision just said that the D clan and the ancient kingdom were evil. Yo, yo. he did. Yeah. And I didn't know how to take that. Just like, <laughs> 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 I 
I mean, so the other thing about it is perspective, right? Uh-huh. Like, so, um, you know, when you think about, like, if Oda wants to give the the premise of World War II to the D-Clan, I don't think that's what's going to happen. But a lot of things, it's like history is written by the victors, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like we don't know what the D-Clan is. I think I don't know if they're necessarily evil, but they're painted out to be evil, right? Those who win justice <laughs> right exactly yeah. don't, don't be flamingo. always right man. don't flamingo yeah. bro yeah he knows, that, he knows fortune cookie of the yeah. one piece world <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah somebody uh, Zan Burrs in the chat said Kaido for president <laughs> <laughs> Kaido. he's got my vote yeah alright so I, I guess we take calls I was wait I was gonna break up something when I was oh uh, uh, go ahead so um like I said I told Lawrence and Sebastian this but um it's on Luffy's awakening mm. and like Kobe, you know how um, people have misconceptions or different beliefs on Luffy's Awakening, think it's, it's something else. I think still think it's rubber. I actually saw, actually saw a video and looked at how they actually get rubber from the rubber tree. And when you pour it the, from the tree, the, the rubber is actually like a liquid form. It's like right. sap or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And we see like Luffy's like doing like a melting thing. So I started thinking of like, like now Lawrence, Lawrence said a long time ago that Lawrence always thought that Luffy's base going to be like something like Kid Boo's. Like, you know, he could f- change his form or he could be cut and he just reform it. Which, if that could happen, I don't know. Um, but I was thinking of, like, you know, since it's liquid, you, I don't know if it's going to be like a lagia, but I, I still think it's going to change forms, right? And um, I got the idea from what I saw of with Kaiteri. You know, some people think that Louis the is going to be like Kaiteri, right? Mm-hmm. Like, has some type of form that he's going to do awakening and have his arms and say, hit, like, a whole bunch of people like Kaiteri did, make a whole bunch of arms. I thought of. That would be the way, like, it would be cool, but I think it would be copying um, Kaiteri. So I didn't really like that. And Bash came up thinking about the staff, like him carrying a staff, you know, and like being Simon like the Monkey King. Yeah, yeah Simon Kong, like the Monkey King. And I said, that would be cool, but again, I don't think that really fits Luffy's style. But I, said, I thought of something that fits more of Luffy's style and also what the Monkey King also does. Monkey King makes clones of himself. And I think that Luffy's going to probably start making clones of himself with his awakening and start probably doing. Gear Four, Snake Man, and Take Man, or all at the same time, or all Gear Four is a Kaido, or all Snake Man is a Kaido, something like that. So like Cracker, pretty, pretty much like Cracker mm-hmm. or North Mingle, but at a grander scale than they. Can, there goes your Take Man. It's about to say it's, yeah. it feeds into his collection theory, and that would be fire if he's making like. Snake Man, Bound Man, and Tank Man, and you're jumping and I, yeah. title. I hope it happens, and he gets demolished. <laughs> demolished. Oh, no, that's a lot to deal Dude. with. I hope he gets demolished. Like Kaido's like, what? <laughs> nah. <laughs> Getting here with all those different. It's a whole Naruto. That's a lot, it's bro. Naruto versus Sasuke. That's a Sasuke lot. Sasuke was deal, dominating, bro. bro. Yeah. The, don't don't compare Naruto I, to Luffy, bro. I like Never. that you you went to another level with it because when people bring up like it changing to a logia fruit, like my thing is like if it changes just to substance, I don't like, Kaido still wins. Like yeah. it, that doesn't like what we're gonna say Kaido is gonna lose against Katakuri or a, that's not gonna. It has right. to be another level thing. And so where the resin theory and my theory kind of connect was like. Um, the way I see it is like Hawkins fruit, where Hawkins fruit is a straw fruit, right? But then somehow he makes voodoo dolls and mm. you can connect someone's fate to it. That's an extension of the power that we, like, yes, it's a straw fruit, but there's an extension that Oda connected to. And it makes sense, but, um, you know, it's not just like, I'm straw fruit, I, connect, I just control straw fruit, I'm rubber, I can liquefy or whatever, right? So the next level is if it's resin, right? When you think about um, resin, amber resin, amber is what you use to preserve things. Mm-hmm. And so that's a possible way. And so that's where my theory and that theory connect where it's like, if you're collecting things, you have like a storage, you can, like if Joy Boy was a collected will or Sun mm-hmm. Nico was a collected will, that's something that was lying dormant and unless you knew about it, you couldn't really awaken it, right? And then the resin theory is like, in this moment where Luffy is like down and out, the resin, if he awakens resin, he's bringing something that was preserved over time. Mm-hmm. And so I can see how those things connect. And, um, but I do like that one with the, with the, uh, the, you know, creating multiple clones. The other thing was, I think Brago brought this up, was like, uh, there was a panel, I think before Sabo Odi, where they were like, they saw the resin from the trees. Mm-hmm. And so it was a very interesting panel because like, she's talking about the resin stuff, right? And then we just see Luffy like bouncing around on these bubbles. And it's like, this is resin. So if it is a resin thing, then maybe that's how Luffy interacts with it. He creates like bubbles or something. Did I don't know. Did you see Grand Line's video that said, um, you know how everybody talks about how that Sun God Nika... Um, partying on Skypea is his favorite panel that he ever mm-hmm. drew. Apparently, that panel about the resin 
it was is another one. His, one of his other favorites. Right. And people are like buying into the resin theory because of that. Right, right. Um, Oda's explanation, I think, in Grand Line's video was just that it, it was the most realistic thing he'd ever done because resin really does create bubbles in that way. He was like, I just liked how like down to earth that actually is. Yeah. And who knows if Oda's just BSing. Yeah, I'm gonna be real. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know that rubber was made from trees. <laughs> It's not an intuitive All thing. Zero, bro. Yeah. No, I no. thought it was a bunch of like different materials <laughs> <laughs> put together. Yeah, like yeah. that's how tires was like. Mm-hmm. That's how I thought of it. Right, I was right. like, yo, rubber is a bunch of things put together and mixed together and yeah. then formulated. I was intuitive. like, yo, it comes from a tree. Yeah. What? Yeah. And what's even crazier is it's like an ancient invention. Like the like I I don't know which. Uh, tribe Aztec Mayan, but they had it th- when this when the colonizers came over. They were playing with rubber balls, and the, those the, colonizers. The, the people were just like, "What <laughs> is this rubber nonsense?" Balls and disease. And, but, and but when you think about like what Anel said, right? Like, and when he went to Skypea, rubber didn't exist there. Mm-hmm. Rubber. They they were like, "What is rubber?" Usab was. I mean, there, but there was, the, was some big trees. You know, but so they were like, they, I mean, but they you need a special tree, right? Yeah. But so the way they were like, they special traded tree. dials for <laughs> rubber bands. Like they, they were yeah. like rubber. And so when I think about that, that reminds me a lot of what the, happened in reality when when the settlers came over. They're like, rubber. Yeah. What is this? This is crazy. This is new. We're going to take all of it. And so then <laughs> what they did was that they, re- they they figured out how to make it, and then they made it better elsewhere. I think India is now or uh, the larger exporter. Like right after, because originally it was Brazil, but then after very soon after, they realized it's a much more efficient process. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in Asia. I don't think they didn't do anything. Shout out to India, yo. So. <laughs> Par, if you trapping rubber, it's all right, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, bro. You want to get the calls? Yeah, let's get to calls. Let's start them early. I, I want to see if they have questions for uh, uh, Parvision, actually. That's going to be interesting. Hey, that's insane. Do you prefer Par or Viz? Or do you want us to just say PV? Huh? Yo, <laughs> put him on the spot. You know I told you. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I see. With, like, um, oh, we got a call. We got a call, yeah. Pushing P. Hey, what's going on? This is Larry from that One Piece talk. Who are you and how are you? Hey, Larry, it's Trick. How y'all doing? Hey, Trick, what's up, man? What's up? What's up? Uh, not much, man. I got a I got a Yonko uh, question for you all all tonight. Some some nice theorizing as well uh, for Parv. Okay. Hey. So, so um, Otis said a while ago that his favorite. IRL uh, pirate is Blackbeard. And I believe that all the Yonko in some way, shape, or form are based on Blackbeard. Or Blackbeard had 14 wives. Sounds a little bit like Big Mom. Um, he got, when he died, he got like shot five times, like stabbed 20 times. Sounds like Whitebeard. Something that's also uh, very, very interesting and very well known about Blackbeard, and don't laugh, Seb, uh, is that he had syphilis, which is both a mental and a physical disorder. All of the Yonkas that we've seen up to this point have had a specific mental and a physical disorder. Specifically, Big Mom has an eating disorder with hunger pains, and she also has either Peter Pan syndrome or a bipolar disorder. Kaido, depression, alcoholism, very obvious. Blackbeard has insomnia. And the most popular theory for him is split personality, which is actually a symptom of neurosyphilis, which is the mental uh, disorder that can come from syphilis. I've never heard of neurosyphilis. <laughs> oh, that's a common thing. Um, that, they they common, actually, damn. yeah, like uh, a lot of people were saying, like, you know, we hold, like, a lot of the presidents are super old, but back in the day, syphilis was crazy and they never tested things. So syphilis ends up eating your brain. Mm. Holy shit. Yeah. It, All right. And one of Blackbeard's most famous uh, piracies is actually just stealing medical equipment. And that's how people figured out he had syphilis. Um, Shanks, obviously, is an amputee. That's one arm. And that's actually where my theorization uh, question comes from. All these other Yonkos have had two things wrong with them, one mental, one physical. We have a mental issue for Shanks. Uh, sorry, we have a physical issue for Shanks. What's his mental issue? Mm. So I just want to go back to the whole because what he's saying about the the syphilis thing that actually would make it makes sense for Blackbeard to go to Drum Island, right? Because the doctor, Doctors Doctor Cray, there. there, that might be the reason he was there. So that's an interesting uh, thing. 
um, to point out with the, you know, that importance for that. Sounds like you're giving Par Vision a theory to create. But, um, <laughs> well, I do have a black <laughs> video coming out, so. Good, man. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Finish your, finish what you were saying, Trick. Oh, I just said Parv can do, do both those theories if he wants to. <laughs> He's a. Uh, oh, this is the drum. But the yeah, drum I'm liberation. Asking, asking, do you guys think that Shanks could have a mental disorder? That you know whether and if so, what could that be, and what that would mean for the story? Um, financial literacy. I don't because <laughs> the dude's is a bum. Like he just lives on any island at this point, right? See, if Kato didn't cover alcoholism, then I would have went with that one. But Kato kind of already covers that. Um, but all the pirates kind of drink, like every single one. I don't know. I'm stumped. He parties a lot. I mean, the only thing I could probably say is he's obsessed. He he probably has an obsession with the understanding of the world. Because in my perspective, Roger did tell him what One Piece meant. And following what Rayleigh said, saying that if I was to tell you, you might have a different understanding from what we understood. Yeah. That probably created this psychological, like, breakdown, and he didn't take it well, which is explaining why he does certain things that no other pirate is able to do with the world government. And he probably just wants to create one piece. And the only other character that seems very similar to the way he would possibly think is, like, somebody like Batman. We oh think Batman God. is very psychotic for the things that he does. He doesn't kill, you know, his Joker. enemies. You know, he lets people do what they have to do. He just keeps, like, an order of peace, you know? And I think that's kind of what Shanks is probably doing, in my guess. I, I have a good, um, and this is the little tease into the Shanks video, is um, it might be that Shanks is running running away from problems, right? Like, he's, yeah. he's afraid of stress. He <laughs> doesn't, like, he, he's faced with this giant, uh, you know, not prophecy, but, but just responsibility that Gold Roger, we don't know what was said to him, right? And it's like, it, when you think about, like, him handing the hat to Luffy, right? And then we think about all the things that he has done. It's like, he doesn't want to take responsibility. He's literally, like, the f first important scene is, like, yo, Whitebeard, you need to stop Ace, right? Like, hey, Gora, say, we don't know what's said, but, like, something needs to happen and I'm not doing it, right? He steps in one time and he's just he doesn't do anything, right? He doesn't want to be this world figure, it feels like, even though he has all the resources, all the backing. So you think it's anxiety? Whether it's anxiety or not, I think it's more like he just doesn't believe in himself. Yeah, imposter syndrome. Mm. Imposter syndrome. I would mm. say that, but the thing is, it's like, it's also Shanks, Shanks, imposter syndrome implies that Shanks doesn't recognize his power. I think he recognizes his power and he's willing to use it. He just doesn't want to. He doesn't want to be that person. He wants someone else to do it. And like, you know, a lot of people are saying like he set up Luffy, right, to do this thing and it's like a kind of a messed up situation. Um, and and uh, in terms of the mental thing, like it, when you think about all the times Shanks has showed up in the story, like you said, he's just a bum. He's not <laughs> taking up territories. He's just showing up whenever it's like, he's like, like it's like a procrastination thing, right? It's like you're waiting to the last moment for something to like prevent or do or whatever. Whereas it's, all the other Yonko are fun. like, if I want to change the world i'm going to create an empire i'm going to create a territory i'm going to be the change that i want to create right whereas shanks is like all right i i can't do this you know like <laughs> yeah looking I'm, at shanks way different i can't do this <laughs> but i can see the world turning over its head if ace mm -hmm. goes after blackberry so i need to stop that i can see the the gorosei are ignoring a big problem i need to, i need them to stop this right like i need i need to at least to do that, right? Like, and I, when you think about like the the mental side of running away from your problems and procrastination, those things kind of do line up. Where it's like, I think the big one of the biggest drops is going to be what Roger said to Shanks. Mm -hmm. because, One thousand percent. Yeah, because like it's like because that that will frame like everything that Shanks is doing. And I have a good idea. I what feel it like is. it's kind of wild that he could be a Yonko and like one of the most famous pirates and. Strongest pirates in the world, and y'all telling me he didn't live up to his potential. <laughs> That's what y'all said. <laughs> like, damn, yo, I was, I was, he was destined I mean, for more than this? No, I mean, when we think about it, right, he's red haired Shanks, mm -hmm. right? Like, he's not known by his name, red hair. Like, you could, he literally put up rock star. I mean, like, is this gonna fool anybody, right? Like, this is red haired. But then when you think about it, he has all this power. What has he done with it? 
right? All the other Yonko have done something. Even Blackbeard, at this point, he's taken over all of Whitebeard's stuff. He's causing mayhem. Shanks does not that he doesn't have feats, but it's like, we haven't gone through the new world and seen any kind of, like, we've seen what Big Mom has done. We've seen what Kaido is doing. We've seen what Blackbeard is doing. Even Dragon, to a certain extent, he's infiltrating places, right? In that regard, the only thing that we know is that Shanks has one territory that Bartholomew took over and just put Luffy's flag there, right? That's the only thing we know, right? So it's kind of like, it does, it's like, you know, if you have all that power, it's like, at least Mihawk is just going around saying he's having fun, right? He does not br- bring along a whole crew. We don't know what Shanks is doing, but it, when you think about Shanks and Mihawk, it's like, they have all this power, they're not doing anything, but Shanks is the Yango. He should be the one doing stuff, right? Film you know? Red coming out. What, what yeah. y'all think? Shanks got rid of that hat in Roger's will the second he could. <laughs> he got rid of the you know what? I was thinking that the whole time. <laughs> so he got rid of uh, Roger's hat the second he could. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he lost his arm so he didn't have to deal with Mihawk anymore. Hey, he I ain't going to take none of that disrespect, yeah. Trey. I, I you all, coming here disrespecting him. I went all can't do it. the Shanks disrespect. Yeah. I know they don't like it, though. I know they don't. Yeah, you want to say? It's all right. He's got the rat, rat, no, no. It's all right. <laughs> Yo, in our Discord, Trick said that snitching is his mental disorder. <laughs> Damn. Oh, That'd be wild. Oh, man. Yeah, I got issues. <laughs> Y'all want to speak, Lawrence Alano? I got something to say. I'm going to Let's go. <laughs> wow, disrespect. I have never thought of Shanks in any light of what you guys were talking about. And I don't, I don't see it, agree with it, but I will say, I don't know, because he's seeming like the normal one out of them. Like, uh, they're all kind of like... Those the reason the ones you got to worry about, though. Yeah, <laughs> that is true, because I will bring up a side of Shanks that, um, that I have noticed. Yeah. Right? Because I think most of them, Big Mom, Kaido, Blackbeard, they're kind of like freaks. Like, they're kind of weird with their personality, and they're kind of like out there flamboyant. But... Shanks, what I notice is low key, really, really ruthless. And what I mean by that, right? Because I noticed this uh, the first, I guess you could say, the first killing we see in, uh, in the show was is, by Lucky Row. Was by Lucky Row. And Shanks said, like, pretty much, right? Because also, what he said before, he said, You could spit on me, you could laugh at me, but you touch anyone of my knockabout. And he also says, I don't care the reason for it to do it. So they can have valid reasons. Yo, this dude killed my wife. Shanks, I don't care. I'm going to hurt you. I'm going to come after you, right? So we see the first death he had. And then one more to that, right, is that when he said, once you bring, you attack Shanks or you recognize you're in a fight with him, Shank kind of shows you, anyway, like, no mercy. Like, he says, we're not playing here. We're not, fighting is not a game, you know? Like, this is serious. There are lives on the line here and why Lucky Rule killed that person. But then also, too, uh, with that attitude, when Mihawk first showed up, Right before he realized that he coming as a friend, Shanks has his air about him. It's like, what do you want, Mihawk? I am not in the mood. Like ready, like ready to kill him. The Mihawk says, "Calm down. I'm not trying to fight." Blah blah blah. Then all party. Ace rolls up. Right, and he's just like he wasn't trying to fight. <laughs> <laughs> like ready, much right? Uh, Ace rolls up. He goes, "What does a rookie like you want with me?" Right, serious. And this is a rookie. Like you could take Shank Ace out. Like you're Yanko. He's like, "What do you want with me?" And then he's like, hold on, I'm just trying to show you because Luffy talked about you. Oh, now you're friends, you know? And then Kid rolls up to him. Kid lost an arm, right? And then they like, pretty much, and how, uh, what I'm thinking is when it comes to fighting, Shanks just showed like this ruthlessness, like kind of like he takes fighting very, very seriously. Like it's not a game that he's coming for your throat, he's coming for your neck. That's what the side I saw of Shanks, more like than everything else. Because also, too, I don't know how, he, and again, because I also think of Kaido, right? Kaido intercepted Whitebeard, and Shanks stepped in. Honestly, do you guys really believe that through words you can stop Kaido from stopping Whitebeard? Like, Shanks could tell Kaido, yo, just be easy, have a drink, and all this, you know. <laughs> be easy, bro. Yeah, yeah, this depends on the words, man. No, I don't think so. Because that good shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see that. Have because the reason why is, like, either. for example, what I see Kaido's personality is more like what we see with Jack, right? On, on, uh, on Zoe. It was like, that ninja's not here. I don't care. Boy, like, Jack stood there five days fighting. You, there's no convincing Jack otherwise. And th- where'd he get that from? From Kaido, his captain, right? So I don't believe through words, but somehow Shanks was able to, I don't say stop, but like get Kaido to agree to at least him. And it had to be through strength, right? And then he shows up to the war, shutting stuff down. So I was like, to me, I see a more of a ruthless side of uh, Shanks that people respect. Uh, and I'm trying to think of... Uh, 
leading that to like his I don't know if he has a person a uh, mental thing because but I anxiety do, yeah anxiety because mm-hmm. I do realize it's interesting that Larry rung out that he did cry when white when Gold Roger was leaving right but he not when he came back yeah when he came back and he he already knew that Gold Roger was dying so why are he you did. crying here. So like I don't know if I don't know if that's something about losing losing people or whatever, but like you can you can even take out that the disbanding of the Re, uh, Roger yeah. Pirates happened yeah, afterward, yeah. but Shanks was also on the ship yeah. when they were all setting yeah. sail for each other. Yeah, no, uh, no, I think the disbanding actually happened. With- no, 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 no. Yeah, no, you're right. You're yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, 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 yeah. I just want to add the like I think. The video that I'm gonna make is gonna be crazy because, <laughs> like, it addresses like what I said and then what you said. They line up, okay. and so, like, I think I think the part that I could le- uh, leak out is like when you think about like what Big Mom is. What is she the emperor of? Right? She's the emperor of like like this food industry, and and like uh, she has like an intelligence network. She has that going on. Then Mosh made that video. Um, we're working on that series together. And Kaido is doing, like, military, and he also has the pharmaceutical stuff, right? And those are world powers, right? So then you, like, leave up the gaps. And so just to, like, put it out there, Blackbeard is we're kind of thinking is more like anarchy. Like, in terms of a world power, it's like terrorism almost. Like, it doesn't mm-hmm. matter where yeah. it is. If it benefits him, he'll go. He'll figure out the, the, the easiest way to get there. And he'll do it. And it's so in Marineford, it's like, I'm going to wait till Whitebeard's like almost gone and I'm going to swoop in and do that, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's like the same thing with Baltigo with uh, Dragon. It's like, I'm just going to surprise them, right? And we don't know why Dragon had to retreat. My opinion on that is that uh, Dragon has a bunch of refugees that he has to protect. So he couldn't defend all of those people because we know that he has refugees. He has like, his whole army is a bunch of kids. My take was a little simpler. It It was more like, Yo, this is my secret base. If I have a fight with a Yonko on this base, people are gonna know about it. Yeah, so there, like now that too. I can't like news like the news found out. Right. That I'm here. Like, this yeah. is not a... So, but then th- you know the question mean? there would be, why didn't... If Dragon's supposed to be this really strong power, mm-hmm. why wouldn't he counter Blackbeard at all, right? Like, he kind of let that steamroll, and that's why a lot of people... Because he's soft, Parvision. Oh, yeah. Say it. So, so, a lot of people Say use it. that to I take re- away from Dragon, but I say it's because he had refugees. He just got a cool I name. I also thought, like, also thought, like, well, what is Dragon's objective and target? Like, he can't waste his military power on a Yonka when he's trying to use that same power to attack the world I'm, government. I'm actively calling my forces yeah. to fight the world a military power. I can't fight a second military yeah. power right now. He to take away my power, my forces, my, like, you know. Well, he doesn't have a lot of people joining his side. Oh, hold on, hold you know, on, he's a liberator. Yeah, 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 it's sounding real crazy right now. Like, Blackbeard didn't just become a Yonka, you know what I'm saying? Still black, still yeah. too dumb for him. He still has a Yonka crew. Yeah. Listen, him. bro, if I got to advance Conqueror's hockey... And future sight, and I'm the supposedly the most wanted person in the world. You better, you better come correct, because you come to me like Clearly. that, you gonna get put down, boy. <laughs> and if Dragon don't got that Clearly. mentality, he ain't the strongest. <laughs> yeah, and so so when you if you we think Blackbeard is this role right where he he's not a part of any faction. He he just wants to terrorize everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. So then there's one other. Sh- the uncle left, right? And you think about the thing that's left with how the CP0, and I talked about this in the BDA video, that CP0 and the world government, they're not on one side of the scale in terms of world power. We're seeing the CP0 do all the weapon stuff, right? They're trying to push weapons out to all these countries to counter dragon. They're on the dark side of things too. Yeah. And you think about the one person who, besides Doflamingo, who mm-hmm. has ties to the Gorosei. And the underworld. And he's on the you know the other side. And so when you think about what Shanks is the emperor of, he's the emperor. Orphans. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I, uh, do I just drop the whole theory? <laughs> but like, okay, okay. So, so, you know, am I right? It, you're, it's not that you're right or wrong, but it's involved there. There, okay. there's a big thing. Um, you know, I'll, this is just, Shanks no, the same video. No, 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 no there's it. way more to right, way, right, way right, more. Right, we gotta take more calls. We gotta take more calls. Trick, did you want to say anything right. else? No, no. I mean, I was so happy. Part basically took the entire uh, idea that I was going to put forward. For uh, for Shanks himself, so you're gonna I'm love good. the Shanks video. You guys bro. rock! I'll see you on the Discord. All right, All right thank you, brother. <laughs> but the orphans. <laughs> the worst thing about 
Is that these kids are orphans? And the orphans orphans don't have have parents. parents. Uh, Marv, do you have any more calls? Shanks and Batman. Oh, okay. Guys, call up. I know that was a long one, but that was good. Yeah, that was good. I Um, like that, man. That was a good question. I never thought about the physical and mental. Yeah. Hey, what's going on? This is that One Piece talk. Who are you and how are you? Yo, it's Jeffy on or Jeff Bird. Hey, Hey, the guy, the legend. All right, so... Today, the official cover for Volume 102 came out. And in it, we see Zoro's swords have, like, this green smoke coming off of it. And I noticed the smoke is kind of similar to, like, to, like, Brooke's color when he, like, exits his body. And we know Mm. that he started calling himself the King of Hell, and Enma is supposed to be the King of Hell also. And now we got the Grim Reaper popping up. So do you think there's any connection between any of that? Oh, we gotta throw that to Parvision's way, right? Yo, yeah. right. <laughs> let me just say, we before we get to the Zoro part, right? For Sanji right. having, I saw this. I saw this. Goat. The, before we saw, no, no goat, the, goat, the, no goat, goat. The the Sanji blue fire. I called that. I called that my Sanji thing. I said that there was gonna be other color flames. Lawrence had called that. I want to say like our whole cake. He had called that. Yeah. So, was it you or was Lionel? No, it was me because flames yeah. represent different temperatures of fire. Yeah. Blue is the uh, hottest fire, or or going into white. But like blue is the hottest fire because it's pure fire. Right. Like, uh, so the different color of fire is actually the temperature going into it. Right, right. And so, like, I was thinking there's going to be other color of fire. And in my Sanji video, I was saying, like, there's an emotional aspect to the colors, too. And maybe we see that changing. If if it changes to blue, maybe we see other colors coming out of it. But so separate to that, this whole Zoro part, like, if, if you haven't seen my Zoro theory, I literally said that the basic power that he's going to end up getting is some kind of soul cutting power and he's been showing that with mm-hmm. with Monet right he had no hockey and he literally just destroyed nah, her. That, that was Conqueror's hockey for sure bro. that was something. all the way back <laughs> in punk <laughs> yes yeah. so hold on Zoro showed hockey during Alabasta right, that was right. super early so and what more I, than my, Luffy did my point about of the Conqueror's hockey is it affects another person's soul right yeah so why isn't it a possibility that he's able to I mean, use that? Because I feel like now you're just tapping into Brook Powers, and I, I get that. No, no, That's but cool. it's so, but like, but wasn't Austria already that? So, but so, but the thing uh, is, with with uh, really. you know Conker stuff, they showed Brook's power to be very similar to Conker's when he put out Big Mom's um, the 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 homies, right? Because yeah. they they're essentially just souls in a vessel. They're weaker than anything, right? And the way he dismantled them was a con. It looked like Conker's hockey, and it, it does a lot of. And my Brook video is coming out soon. Damn. So um, Brook got Conker's, Sanji got Conker's, Jimbe got Conker's. Yo, it's Nami was starting last chapter. Nami has Conker's. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, anime's terrible. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> did I say that Nami has conquered? No, that? no, I'm just yeah. saying. Oh no, but like I have, I said it. I have a. Yo, <laughs> Mar, you guys, you be ten foilers sometimes, bro. You always. <laughs> no, no, but, all right, all right. So here, here's a little tidbit. Here's a little tidbit, right? Nami is able to counter Big Mom's strongest homie. Oh my god. And sw- in the presence of Big Mom, she's able to sway that homie over. That's Brooke couldn't even do that. Yo, Yabi, With his power. Really cool. Yabi's stressing me out, Marv. Just cut the channel. Wait, <laughs> just cut it off. That was to her. Well, that goes into what Sebastian Gabe saying. I'm talking nonsense. Is that the way Big Mom treats her, yeah, so. her um, subordinates or her friends is like, it's such of a lack of a love or appreciation that kind of like, I could just throw you a belt. That if you have someone else that fills in a void that a parent in a way should be given to their, right. sh- their thing. Nami was able to sweet talk her way into Zeus's heart or whatever. Sweet talk. I mean, but like she fed her. But the thing, the There's main a lot thing of about girls Big like Mom's that. power, <laughs> a lot of girls like that. The big thing about Big Mom's power is it runs on fear, right? Yes. She, it, like the Conquers, and I, I, I have the Conquers hockey video too. Mm-hmm. And so the big thing that I ask is that is like, what if you gave Big Mom's fruit to someone who didn't have Conquers? Would they be able to use it? And when you think about I mean, Big Mom's fruit, right? Like the the strongest homies, those are supposed to be the strongest will. They're supposed to be a part of her soul, right? Like those are those homies, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're able to sway those, because she can straight up just, I think Luffy was able to do this in the Seducing Forest. He used Conquers and then the, the things wilted away, the weaker mm-hmm. ones, right? And so Big Mom's able to do that 
like automatically. But when you think about the strongest homies, Brooke's power was able to dissipate all of these other ones, except those big ones. Whereas Nami, in the presence of Big Mom, is able to turn Zeus over to the point where Zeus is is tied to her power, right? And he's able to betray her and attack her. That's wild. And so the part about Conqueror's Hockey that I'm talking about in my video is that um, when you really break it down, Conqueror's Hockey is the ability to command. It's about you having an intent and you able to command other people to do that. I feel you. I get you. But this is like One Piece madness. <laughs> Y'all say it, Nam. <laughs> Conquerors hockey, no. Brooke, miniature, like, no, I'm not saying full-blown conquerors, yeah. but I'm saying miniature conquerors, nah. Because now Usopp got it, too. We know no, Usopp hey, got that, hey, hey, and that's no, not true hey, either. I, mean, I love all the slander he has for Usopp. Yeah. He has to admit hey, that Usopp hey, has it. Usopp. Go have it. I gotta accept that Marco got it too to some degree. No, Marco. Marco. I think we can all agree on that. Marco ain't even doing that. Hold on, Kid has it. Never been shown. Kid all right, but Kid's know. weird. Kid's Kid weird. Kid doesn't use any. Kid ain't weird. He just sucks. Kid doesn't have man. any hockey. Kid apparently, Kid survived the long, the 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 mass genocide of them children. Uh, Kid, man. Just to just to answer Javis's question, I think because one. Back when Rayleigh was explaining about hockey, he said hockey allows you to touch or affect the intangible, right? If that includes, anyway, souls in One Piece, that should work. You get what I'm saying? Because light's intangible. You're able to affect light. Smoke's intangible. You're able to affect, like, all logs are kind of, like, intangible. You're able to affect them. So you using your hockey to, anyway, soul cut... That's kind you of. Do you think you affect people intimately? No, I don't know. Cause Zol when Luffy would when Luffy was defined intimate. Because <laughs> I have it in my video. <laughs> <laughs> I have it. No, when Luffy was getting it's like by Big Mom and a whole cake. When Luffy started punching the um, the flame, the flames, Big, Big Mom's flames, Luffy couldn't hurt hurt it at all, and he was doing hockey ironing. He couldn't touch it. Like no, Luffy said. He's not, I guess he's not a logger or whatever. Because he Luffy physically. And didn't what didn't he have then? He didn't have Conqueror's coding yet. True, true. I mean, yeah. maybe you could probably do it, but... Come on. And, and, like, when you think about, like, uh, Zoro, like, Flame Rend, right? Flame Rend should work on, on you know, flames, but then he was able to cut the... Um, I forget the Prometheus. flame. Prometheus. Prometheus, Prometheus right? Prometheus, yeah. And he was stalling that. And so then I went... Because I put out my Zoro video, and then he cut it, and I was just like... Could have waited. <laughs> I was just like, hold I mean, on. This is this is connecting. You know, it's crazy. But um, The only other person to cut a homie was Brooke, too. Yeah, and he has. What does he have? It's light work for Brooke, though. He do that. But his, that's his ability. <laughs> Brooke's ability allows him to affect Brooke, like his souls in a way. Right. Yeah. I guess. There's a connection there with souls and conquers because when you think about conquers, it's the power to overwhelm other souls, right? I agree yeah. with that. I yeah. agree with that. Yeah. Um, as far as the green flame, I just thought it looked cool. <laughs> like, that's an underrated aspect of it. I just thought like Oda was going for a dope look. On this cover page, and oh, so you can say that's a dope look, but not Sanji's leg. Blue flame is an actual thing. Yeah. In the, but he the said world. it got hotter. Yeah, and then changed he, color. He so that, that's that's fine. It's it's hotter hotter you see how y'all be selective, yo? It's not selective. You what you saying selective. that this is just cool you, looking ago, for Zoro? The title of the no, chapter was no. Warrior of Science. I'm this saying science. everything yeah. that Par and y'all are saying could be right. I just wanted to point out that it looked cool because we didn't say that. Yeah, at the end Sanji barely be queen. We out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would say most people would say I'm not gonna start them, fights but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever. Anyway, J Verse, you're the man. Thank you for calling out, brother. Alright. I'll talk to you later. Yeah, appreciate you. Thanks, man. It's my guy, man. Yeah, he's he's uh definitely one of the best people in our Discord for sure. Without a doubt. Yeah, he's always on. Yeah, yeah. always on. on. Always coming with the facts. Dude, he finished Crows already. That's crazy. Yo, so Sebastian's really good at looking up chapters and guessing, like, which thing happened during which he's chapter. smoking me. <laughs> J-verse be like that, yo. Damn. Oh, yeah. It's scary. I need that. Do, you, it's do scary. you, like, have an editor for your videos, or do you collect all them yourself? Me. Bro. Takes mad work. Yeah. Dude. Oh, you guys could call again. <laughs> yeah. If you guys haven't gotten... Uh, yeah. Probably take one more. Um, yeah, we could probably take one more. Dude, I had to do that three video, and I was looking up the... If you doing all them pastes to your, yourself, yo, my, 
Because <laughs> that took me a whole, like, five hours of just staying up late, just kind of getting it right. Yeah. And I can imagine it takes a while. Dude. It, it takes... So the getting the pictures part... It's the it's the most timely part of doing the thing. Writing the script. If I could just have someone do that, like, be cake. Hey, what's going on? This is that One Piece talk. Who are you and how are you? What's going on, fellas? This is Aaron Tate. Aaron Tate. Hey, Aaron man. Tate in a building. The weekly call. <laughs> what's up, bro? Oh, man. Um, so a couple months ago, I started rewatching the anime because I uh, got one of my friends on it. Damn, so man. I feel bad for you. <laughs> I did the same thing. I got my wife on it, so she's starting. Yeah, oh, nice. Yeah. There's a Mrs. Vision. There. Is. <laughs> so, uh, but I just recently made it to, uh, or I'm almost at the end of Whole Cake, mm-hmm. and so I just finished uh, the Luffy and Katakuri fight, and watching that fight again gave me a newfound respect for. Like I already had major respect for Katakuri, but like I think after rewatching that fight, and this is my third time watching it, I think at this point. Katakuri is my favorite Luffy opponent, so I wanted to get you guys' opinion on who you think uh, or who is your favorite. I'm Luffy tired opponent. of all the disrespect. You feel me, Aaron? For Katakuri. Like, people don't realize he versus the main protagonist of the show, which clearly Kaido can't even kill. So <laughs> Kaido like, just killed him. Whatever. At this point in time, it's like, you gotta understand that what Katakuri was doing at that point in time was abnormal. Mm-hmm. And he was still performing at the highest level. Like, not many people can do that. Even if we say, like, he didn't necessarily could take punches because, you know, whatever. He was still overwhelming the dude, like, 90% of the fight until the last 10. Bro, you know, answer his question or what? I forgot what his question was. <laughs> What's your favorite? Y'all be making me mad. Said, man. what is your favorite yeah, Luffy, Luffy villain or opponent specifically? Oh, yeah. Really it would have to be uh, Luchi or Katakuri. It really yeah. Sebastian. I didn't know he. He. I thought he'd say no. He ain't saying no. No, no. Got um, clearly couldn't do anything. He's, he's not really a villain to Luffy, right? Uh, like, um, <laughs> can't even hurt Luffy. Man, that's actually a hard question because if, if it's villain to Luffy specifically, you're gonna pick Dolphy. Yeah, that's what I thought. <sighs> that's what I was thinking. You're it's gonna between pick. Crocodile. It's, it's, it's not cro- Crocodile. It's, it's actually no. Crocodile. Oh, yeah, it is Crocodile. Crocodile literally said, "Yo, you're gonna no, drown." Walked away. No, didn't make sure that they drowned, listen, and then they came back and my, beat him. It's my, it's my choice. You just like it because he has a cigar and a suit. I liked the bounce off between Luffy and Crocodile. Let me see. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's my hold turn. Hold on, hold on. You had your red hold on, hold on. about Conan Curry. Let me red about Crocodile. Hold on, hold on. Let me red. Hold on, the show about to end. I just wanted to say, if you take away his fashion sense, oh my is God. he still a great villain? <laughs> yes. Are you it, taking it wasn't the, him? He's lying. He, Crocodile's fit on Alabasta was stupid. You know what I'm saying? Are the you? Hulk was fire, but like the green cape and we got four minutes, man. Go. Listen. Are you on board with Croco Mom? No, I'm not at all. It's <laughs> the worst. It's, <laughs> that is the worst theory yes. in One Piece history. Yeah, um, cool. We got terrible. four minutes. Come anyway, on. Croco because of the way it bounced, like how he bounced off of Luffy. That was the first time Luffy had ever lost for real, so it was a shock. He beat him a second time, and he low key beat him a third time because if Luffy didn't get that antidote, he would have died, and Crocodile would have woke up one day. So like, or whatever. So. I did like the, the the interactions that they had as a whole, where he was fighting him, and it got way, way, way personal for Luffy, because he was telling him, like, oh, you don't need friends, don't trust anybody. They were diametrically opposed. Dolphy would be second, but go ahead. Uh, Bart? Um, if we're talking about villains, just villains, right? I, I like Crocodile and Doflamingo, but that's because of their roles as villains, right? Like, they were kind of like these mastermind, like, taking yeah. over countries in different ways. And, you know, Crocodile had it a little bit harder because he wasn't a celestial dragon, didn't have the world government on his back, right? Like, I, I mean, mm-hmm. he was a warlord, but... Um, but in terms of, like, Luffy villain, like, Luffy, to, to Luffy, I like Katakuri, right? Yeah. The, not even a villain. The right? thing, yeah, he's not he's not a villain, but, like, when you think about hey, his his role hey, and, like, hey, in terms of the character, mm-hmm. right? Like, I want Katakuri to come back. And the other part of it is, like, in the fight, like, nobody can convince me otherwise. Lu- Katakuri brought himself down to Luffy's level. 1,000%. Yeah, like, the way, if he used the stickiness part of his thing, Luffy uh, was gone. Uh, we'll, we'll talk after the... After All right. right. <laughs> We'll talk All right. the All right, we're gonna fight outside. So Kata Curry, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm a Kata Curry. All right, Lionel. Um, just pretty. Uh, I would say, I don't know. Uh, I think probably Rob Lucy was one of them. I would say for Rob sure, Lucy. for Rob sure, Lucy. easy, think, easy pick. Because I think that's mostly ones that affected. Again, we all agree affected Straw Hat's 
personally. Like, it's like out of all Luffy's voyage, this one was more personal. It was the greatest Just arc too. Yeah. Yeah. So, but do you think Luchi is still relevant to Luffy? Hell no. <laughs> not, <laughs> not even a, a chance. Bit. Not, not a even a chance. Bit. That's so upsetting yeah. though, right? He so, would team up with him and Rob Luchi, right, right Lionel? Yeah. Law. In all honesty, I don't really care for any of Luffy's villains. In all honesty, like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Why are you on a show? Crazy. That's crazy. What are you talking about? What are you what that's, 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 that's the honest take. Not even Kaido. Not even Kaido right to now. To me, yo, Kaido's nuts. I <laughs> honorable mentions I'll give because anyway, the the ones because they wanted to fight. I swear, Luffy. if you say Don Krieg, bro, you're right. You're right, bro. No, no, no. Because like the ones like for I Rob Lucy, I will say one of my honorable mentions because he was down to fight on that situation. He's like, nah, we gonna fight one on one. Your At least he didn't say Hardy, right? Like you uh, said, oh, that you said hoodie. Hardy's growing. No, I said Rob Lucy because he down the. F- I said honorable okay. mentions. I got to me. I'm still waiting on the one who I would pick as my as my favorite. As Black your favorite down. Luffy villain. Yeah, that's what I like. I don't have any yet. But honorable mentions because they're down the down to fight Luffy, Rob Lucy, Katakiri, and uh, Kaido. Because they're because de- to me it's like. I'm Yo, all you about can that never, great you fight. You can just never pick something, can Yo, you? No, ever. I'm, ever. I'm not easy to please, right? I'm not uh, easy to like, please. Come on, bro. No, I'm switching on my answer, bro. It's dot on, bro. <laughs> That's it. It's, it's really it's Blackbeard on low, but go ahead. Because nah, yeah. I, want, I want the great fight. And I want pretty much. So that's what like, I'm looking at fighters like. Like, down to fight Luffy and giving Luffy a challenge in a fight. But that's what I'm looking at. Gr- villains, like, I don't really care. It's not what I'm meshing with that I'm connecting with or... This dude said honorable mentions. Yeah, like, <laughs> come on, bro. Hey, honorable mentions for a title that doesn't exist for you, apparently. <laughs> yeah. uh, one, before you mention honorable mentions, you have to mention the one before the honorables. Nope. That's that's actually the opposite. I have high expectations <laughs> and I'm not living up to them yet. Oh, hey, my. Hey. All right. All right. All right. Hey, anyway. Well, I'm not satisfied. That's yeah. I'm not. Anyway. <laughs> not by the villains, Anyway, no. we got to go. I need more. So, before we head out... Uh, Parvision, do you want to tell everybody where they could find you? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. You, we're still on the phone with you, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, Aaron, my bad. We're about to go, bro. I'm sorry. It's all good, man. Great show, guys. See you next week. All right. Thank you for calling. All right. That was my bad. All right. So... <laughs> Tell them where they can find you, Par. Um, I'm I'm spreading out everywhere. My main stuff is on my YouTube. That's where you get like that's where I put all, most of my effort. Most of the quality is there, right? Um, come through on my YouTube. I read all the comments. Like I try to at least. Um, I slacked a little bit, but I still read all of them. So for sure, interact. Um, come to the Discord because then we, if I'm in other places, you'll know on my Discord. Um, I'm sharing like what I like to do with Twitter is like while I'm making these long videos, um, you know, I see I have like teaser content, and so I'll end up teasing like uh, either my th- video or like another theory um, on my Twitter. Um, so uh, my Twitter is the Parvision, but my YouTube and my TikTok is Parvision. Um, and and in my YouTube videos, you can see all the links for all the other channels um, and everywhere else and grab my merch and whatever you want, you know, support however you like. All right. Thank you for visiting our show, too, Parvision. It's a pleasure, bro. Deeply Yo, honored. I'm, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> like, Come back this is, anytime, man. I want this again. You know? <laughs> definitely have like, to. Like what you said before, I hope you meet. we meet the expectation above and beyond. This is above, above and beyond. beyond. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody that happened to join us. I'm going to actually put uh, Parvision's uh, links inside of the description of the video as well when I get a chance to. But other than that, I really just want to say I appreciate all of you. I appreciate the donations, the subscribers that happened to join, and also just for being here and joining Parvision and us and watching us discuss cartoons. So, (laughs) other than that... Anime. Yeah. (laughs) I just want to say thank you again, and we're going to head out. Ciao, <laughs> <laughs>